This is Ken Coleman speaking. We present for you another game from the Miley Collection. We hope that you enjoy. First down, they scored. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Clay Walsh with Jack Whitaker at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. For this afternoon, the, uh, the Green Bay Packers right. and the Philadelphia Eagles will meet for the championship in the National Football League. The Eagle captains today are Norm Van Brocklin and Chuck Bednarik. Bill Forrester and Jimmy Ringo are the Packer captains. They were out a moment ago for the coin toss. The Eagles won the toss, elected to receive, and will defend the goal to our right. In this thrilling 1960 season, in the Western Conference, the Packers finished with a record of eight wins and four losses, beating out Detroit and San Francisco, who finished second with records of seven wins and five losses. The Eagles lost their opener this year and then won nine straight games to wrap up the title in the Eastern Conference. The Eagles won ten and lost two, finishing a game and a half ahead of Cleveland. The Packers have scored this year 332 points. The Eagles have scored 321. The Packers also have given up fewer points. The Packer opponents scored 209. The Eagles gave up 246. So they're about even there in point scoring, the Packers having a slight edge. But the Packers' edge on defense is considerably more. In previous title games, the Packers beat the Boston Redskins in 1936, lost to the New York Giants in 1938, beat the Giants in 1939, and again in 1944. That was the Packers' last title, 1944. The Eagles played in three consecutive championship games in 1947, 48, and 49. They lost the first one and won in 48 and 49, their last championship year. Both clubs have made rapid progress to the top in just a very few seasons. In 1958, they both finished last in their divisions. That was Buckshaw's first year as Eagle head coach. Since that 2-9-1 year, he brought them along to a 7-5 performance in 1959 and to the top this year. The Packer resurgence has been equally amazing. The 1958 record of 1-10-1 was the poorest in Packer history. That lone victory, by the way, was over the Eagles, 38-35 at Green Bay. Vince Lombardi took over as head coach of the Packers in 1959 and brought them along to a third-place finish in the West with a 7-5 record and this year to an 8-4 record to win the title. We still have the band down on the playing field entertaining the huge crowd here as they file into Franklin Field. As we glance around, we can see that uh, it's filling up rapidly and probably will be filled by the time we have the opening kickoff. Now, let's take a look at the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game. First of all, for the Philadelphia Eagles, at left end, Pete Retzlaff, 6'1", 209 pounds from South Dakota State. At left tackle, Jim McCusker, 6'2", 245 pounds from Pitt. At left guard, Jerry Hoot, 6'1", 228 pounds from Wake Forest. The center, we expect, starting at center, Chuck Bednarik, 6'3", 235 pounder of Penn, his 12th year in the league. At right guard, John Wittenborn, 6'2", 230 pounder from southeast Missouri. At right tackle for the Eagles, J.D. Smith, 6'5", 250 pounds from Rice. And at right end, Bobby Walston, a six-footer, 190 pounds from Georgia, a 10-year veteran. The quarterback for the Eagles today will be that familiar number 11, Norm Van Brocklin, 6'1", 200-pounder from Oregon, his 12th year in professional football. At left half for the Eagles, number 33, Billy Barnes, 5'11", 202, from Wake Forest. At fullback, number 35, Ted Dean, a rookie in the NFL. And the flanker back, or right half, number 25, Tommy McDonald, 5'10", 182 pounds from Oklahoma, his fourth year in the National Football League. The offensive unit for the Green Bay Packers will have, at left end, Max McGee, 6'3", 205 pounds from Tulane, five-year veteran. At left tackle, number 76, Bob Skaronsky, 6'3", 250-pounder from Indiana. At left guard, Fred Thurston, 6'3", 
six one two hundred and fifty pounder from Valparaiso. The center, the veteran Jimmy Ringo, six one two hundred thirty five pounds from Syracuse. At right guard, Jerry Kramer, six three two hundred and fifty pounds from Idaho. The right tackle for Green Bay, Horace Gregg, six four two hundred fifty pounds from SMU. And at right end, Gary Canapple, six four two hundred twenty pounder from Idaho. The Packer quarterback will be Bart Starr, 6'1", 200 pounds from Alabama. At left half, number five, Paul Horning, 6'2", 215 pounds from Notre Dame. At fullback for Green Bay, number 31, Jimmy Taylor, 6'4", 215 pounds from LSU. And the flanker back for Green Bay, number 86, Boyd Dowler, 6'5", 220 pounder from Colorado. Those are the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. Between the Green Bay Packers, winners of the Western Division of the National Football League, and the Philadelphia Eagles, winners of the East. The officials are out, and we'll have the ball game underway very shortly. They're going to introduce the ball players now. First of all, the Green Bay team, the offensive center, Jimmy Ringo of Syracuse, moving out. Here comes the right guard, Jerry Kramer, moving out, coming from between the goalposts out to the middle of the field. Here's the left guard, Fred Thurston. The right tackle, Boris Gregg, moving upfield. We have quite a, quite a representation here for the northern part of Wisconsin, or all parts of Wisconsin, chartered planes and trains, and we know that we have about 2,000 here at least from the Green Bay area. The left tackle, Bob Skaronsky, has been introduced. Here's the right end, Gary Knapple. The left end, Max McGee, moving upfield. And now the backfield. Here is the flanker back, Boyd Dowler, coming out. We have kind of a nice day here in Philadelphia. The sun is shining brightly. We expected a high temperature of 45 degrees. I doubt if it'll get that warm. Here's Paul Horning coming out. Jimmy Taylor, the fullback, moves upfield. And one more, the quarterback, Bart Starr, and the entire Packers squad moving out and moving to the near side of the playing field directly below us. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. A big cheer went up as the Eagles start out of their dressing room out toward the field. They will be introduced now. The Green Bay Packers head coach is Vince Lombardi. His assistants are Phil Bankston, Bill Austin, Norb Hecker, and Red Cochran. Well, here comes Chuck Bednarik, a mighty popular football player here in Philadelphia. A big cheer goes up for him. He's been a standout now for a number of years in the National Football League. Now Jerry Hoot. Here's the right tackle, J.D. Smith. The left tackle, Jim McCusker. Here goes Bobby Walston, the right end. And now the left end, Pete Rexlap. McDonald, a real speedster. Here comes Billy Barnes. The fullback, Ted Dean. And the veteran quarterback, Norman Buckland. Listen to that cheer. Well, they have introduced 
the two offensive units. As I mentioned earlier, the Eagles won the toss, elected to receive. So they, in the first quarter, will be moving from right to left, defending the goal to our right. The Eagles move over to the bench, their bench on the far side of the field. The Packers are in one large group right down below here on the near side of the playing field. So in a moment now, we'll have the reenactment of the coin toss as they bring out the captains of the two squads, Van Brocklin and Bednarik, the two Eagle veterans, Ringo and Forrester, will represent the Green Bay Packers. The referee today is Ronnie Gibbs. Packers were out on the field early. In fact, they got off their bus after arriving here, moved right out on the playing field, and everybody got a good close look at it. And then they went into the clubhouse, suited up. Some of the fellows were wearing their regular cleats. Others were wearing gym shoes. Max McGee came out with one gym shoe and one pleated shoe. And we are checking now, and they all are wearing cleats. But as I pointed out, that field is frozen. It is very hard. Perhaps by now, the uh, surface has melted somewhat. But uh, nevertheless, the uh, footing is not going to be the best. We get the signal now from Ronnie Gibbs. And the Eagles will receive. They will defend the goal to our left. So in the first quarter, Philadelphia will be moving from left to right. The Eagles come onto the field. The Packers break their huddle down here and move out. So we're just about set for the opening kickoff. At the other microphone, the voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Jack Whitaker. Thank you very much, Blaine Walsh, and good afternoon, everybody. It's high noon here in Philadelphia, and the championship game just to get underway. The Packers will be kicking off to Philadelphia. They'll be moving right to left. West to east, as Franklin Field is laid out. The Packers dressed in gold pants, white jerseys with green numerals and gold helmets. The Eagles in their home uniforms of silver pants, green jerseys and silver numerals. Horning has set the ball up on the 40. Deep for Philadelphia, 22 Tim Brown and 35 Ted Dean in deep safety at the goal line. Horning moves up to the ball. The kick, an end over end down the middle and the game is underway. Brown takes it on the four yard line, across the 10. Cutting to the outside, to the 20. And finally knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line by Ray Nitschke, big number 66, the linebacker of the Green Bay Packers. So our first play from scrimmage in this championship game of 1960 will be first and 10 for Philadelphia at their own 22-yard line. Chuck Bednarik is starting an offensive center for Philadelphia and probably will go both ways. Retzlaff is now flanked left to the far sideline. McDonald flanked to the right, the near sideline. Van Brocklin a quarter. Comes back. Fakes a hand off to his fullback. A swing pass intended for Barnes, but intercepted. Just a moment. Intercepted, yes, by Bill Quinlan, breaking in from his right-end position. On the first play of the game, Green Bay, first and ten on the 19-yard line. The pass thrown a little high, intended for Barnes. A swing pass in the left flat. Intercepted by Bill Quinlan, and the Packers are in business. The ball at the 14-yard line. First and ten for Green Bay. Star, quarterback now, flanked out to the left is Max McGee. Naffle to the right. The handoff goes to Taylor. He's across the 15-yard line before he's hit down there by Chuck Bidnarik, number 60. And Chuck Weber, number 51, the middle linebacker. A pickup on the play of about five yards. It'll be second and five. The ball just across the 10 at the 9. The first play from scrimmage. A tremendous break here for the Packers. Second and five, the ball at the nine. Flanking out to the left is Max McGee. Boyd Dallas split about five yards to the right. The hand off to Horning coming around the left side, across the nine, and down to about the five, six-yard line before he sit there by Jesse Richardson, big number 72, and Tom Brookshire, the right wing back. And let's see where they'll place the ball. The ball at about the seven. Third down. And about three to go for Green Bay at the Philadelphia 7. This game wasn't ten seconds old and it broke wide open. Flank way out to the right now. Boyd Dollar 
And to the left, Max McGee. Morning and Taylor in the backfield. Star with a deliberate count. Hands off to Taylor, who's trying to get around the left side, but he's hit there and gets nowhere as Don Burroughs, number 45, comes up from his right safety position to knock him down. A gain of about a yard of the play. It'll be fourth down and two, the ball at the six. And this crowd hasn't settled at its seat yet. This defensive team of Philadelphia, who's given up a lot of yardage, have been mighty tough all season inside their 20-yard line. It's a fourth down situation. About one and a half yards to go. No field goal. Dowler split way to the right. McGee out about five yards to the left. It's a beat the right through the middle. I don't think he got anywhere. Let's see. There's a big pile up at about the five yard line and the Eagles have held. The Eagles have held. Chuck Weber plunged up in the middle linebacking spot there as Jim Taylor tried for the first down. The Eagles ball, first and ten on their own five. And this is an indication of what it's going to be like today. We're in for a great ball game. McDonald split out wide to the right. Red slap to the left. The ball just on the five. Barnes takes it, trying to swing around the left side. Gets across the five, but is finally knocked down back about the five-yard line by Willie Davis, number 87, and Henry Jordan. A gain of a half a yard, if any, on the play. We'll call it second and ten from the five. A beautiful sunlit day here in Philadelphia with a temperature about 40 degrees, a slight breeze. Now McDonald splitting to the right and Rhett's left to the left. Dean and Barnes in the backfield with McDonald, with the Van Brockman, rather. The handoff again goes to Billy Barnes. He's out to the 10-yard line. Right at the 10-yard line, hit by Willie Davis, number 87, six foot three, 210 pounds from Grambling University. It'll be third down and five. The ball at the 10 for Philadelphia. Opening moments. 11 minutes and 15 seconds left in this first period. There is no score as McDonald flanks wide to the right and Rhett's left to the left. Van Brocklin on a delay hand off to Dean who crosses the 15. Fumbles the ball. And let's see who's got it. Dean was up plenty for a first down across the 20-yard line. But it's recovered by Green Bay. Bill Forrester, number 71, falls on it. And it'll be Green Bay's ball at the 22. And once again, Green Bay has taken over deep in Philadelphia territory. First and ten at the Eagle 22. Again, McGee split to the left. A hand off to Horning. He's coming around the left side, hit by Brookshire at about the 17-yard line. A pickup on the play of about five yards. Second and five at the 17. An interception and a fumble, both recovered by Green Bay in the opening moments of the first period. No score yet. Second and five, Green Bay's ball at Philadelphia's 17-yard line. Boyd Dowler flanking out right. A hand off to Taylor, across the 15 and down to about the 12-yard line, hit by Chuck Weber and Maxie Bond. Now they're getting close to a first down. And I believe they'll bring the chains into measure. Here comes the chains in. An intercepted pass on the first play by the Eagles, recovered by Green Bay. The Eagles held. And the Eagles going for a first down. Ted Dean fumbled. Green Bay has recovered. And they have now made a first down at the 11-yard line. First and ten at the 11 for Green Bay. Ten minutes left to play of this first period. A capacity crowd at Franklin Field, 67,000. And every seat seems to be filled from our vantage point. Boyd Dowler flanking wide to the right and Max McGee to the left. Taylor and Horning in the backfield with Starr. And off to Horning going around the right side. He's hit by Bednarik across the 10-yard line. Bednarik pulls him down at about the 8-yard line. Fred Thurston leading the way with a nice block. A pickup on the play of about 3 yards. 
Second down and seven, the ball at the eight-yard line. The field frozen. But apparently softening up now that the sun has come out. Boyd Dollar flanked out to the right, and Max McGee way out to the left, which is the open side of the field. And off to Taylor, building down to about the five-yard line. Hit there by Eddie Kayak. There seems to be a flag on the play. Out at about the ten-yard line, the official has dropped his cap, to be more technical about it. And let's see what the infraction is and who it's against. The official's talking to the Eagles, and they'll be marking it off, apparently, against Green Bay. It's against Green Bay, and it's offside. The ball back now. Tom Moore has come in the game, and Paul Horney coming out. The ball at the 12-yard line. Where it'll be second and 12. Ball at the 13, second and 12. Taylor and Moore in the backfield now with Dollar and McGee split. Here's the first pass for Green Bay. He's getting a rush on by Richardson, but gets away from him. Throws into the end zone. Broken up by Bednarik and Bobby Freeman. Intended for Gary Knapple. Horning coming back in now and more out. It'll be third down and 12 yards to go from the 13 for Green Bay. Nine minutes left in this first period. No score. And all the action has been within the Philadelphia 20-yard line. Philadelphia taking the opening kickoff. An interception by Green Bay. The Eagles held. A fumble by the Eagles. And Green Bay on the march again. Third and 12 from the 13. Boyd Dowler out to the right. Max McGee to the left. Another pass. Starr dropping back. Firing over to the left side. Intended out there for Max McGee. But broken up by Tommy Brookshire at the last moment. So it'll be fourth down now and 12. And a field goal attempt would seem to be in order. Paul Horning. Mark Starr will be holding. Fourth down and 12. The ball at the 13. As the Eagle defense so far has been up to it. Horning will kick from the 20. The ball at the 20. Starr will hold. It's down. The kick is up. It is good. The kick is good. And there's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay 3, Philadelphia nothing. What does a man want most in his life? A safe and happy home for his children and his wife. He wants a piece of land he can call his own. A tiny patch of earth where his future may be grown. Be it 50 by 100, four acres by the score. His own piece of land is what a man is working for. When a man wants the money for that home of his own, he goes to see his friends at his savings and loan. Then things begin to hum on that tiny piece of land as all the builders' men start working hand in hand. The walls begin to rise, soon the roof trees overhead, and before you can believe it, all the kids are tucked in bed. Now a man and his family have a home of their own, thanks to their friends at the savings and loan. Thanks to their friends at the savings and loan. Back at Franklin Field, where Green Bay has just gone ahead in the opening minutes of this first period of the championship game, 3 to nothing on a 20-yard field goal by Paul Horning. After Green Bay had cashed in on two breaks by Philadelphia offense, an interception and a fumble. Horning on the 40 now, ready to kick off with Dean and Brown deep at the goal line for Philadelphia. Horning boots the ball. It's slanting over to the left side and short. Taken by Richie Lucas at about the 15-yard line, across the 20, and finally down at about the 23-yard line. Stopped down there by Andy Shiverko, number 67, and Bart Starr. So Philadelphia at the 24, first and 10. 3-0, the Packers lead. Retzlaff flanking out to the left side and McDonald to the near sideline. 
Open field to the left, near sideline to the right. The Eagles moving left to right. A fumble in the backfield by Van Brocklin. And let's see who has the ball. Van Brocklin fumbling the center. Covered by Van Brocklin, but a loss of about two yards on the play. Second down and 12. The ball at the Eagle 22. Eight minutes left to play in this first period. Philadelphia having trouble getting their offense started. Retzlaff split left and McDonald right. Barnes and Dean in the backfield. Van Brocklin back, throwing down the middle, intended for Walston. And they're going to call pass interference on Evelyn Tunnell, number 45, who bumped into Bobby. Pass interference at the 35 of Philadelphia first down. First, first down for Philadelphia. The ball just short of the 35 at the 34. Retz left, split to the left, McDonald to the right. The handoff to Dean, trying on a delayed handoff, gets across the 35, but he's hit there by Henry Jordan. A pickup of about two yards on the play. The ball at the 36. Second down and eight. Ball at the Philadelphia 36-yard line. McDonald splitting to the right. Retzlaff a tight end at left side. McDonald throwing long, intended for Boston on the right side, but it's overthrown and incomplete. Covered there by Tunnell. Third down and eight for Philadelphia. The ball at the 36 yard line. Green Bay leading three to nothing. With seven minutes left to play in this first period. Now Retzlaff once again flanks to the left side and McDonald to the right. Walston split about five yards at right end. A quick look into Walston across the 40-yard line at about the 43. But not quite enough for a first down. Let's see where they place it. At the 44, they may have a measurement. Hit there by Ray Nitschke. Chuck Bedere out watching as they bring the chains in for Philadelphia, and most of the Packers gathered round. It was third down and eight. They needed to get right to the 34. They miss it by a half a yard. They miss it by a half a yard. Fourth down. And the Philadelphia kicking team comes in and dropping back in safety. Number 24, Willie Wood. And number 33, Luke Carpenter for Green Bay. Van Brocklin will punt for Philadelphia. Three nothing, a Paul Horning 20 yard field goal. The only score in this game so far. Van Brocklin will punt from about the 35 yard line. Wood and Carpenter deep. Standing down at their own 15 and 20 yard line, respectively. There's a snap. And the boot. A high spiral. Going down to Willie West. Now he takes it over to Carpenter at about the 16 yard line, and he's hit immediately. Walked down there by Jerry Reichow and John Wittenborn, who covered the punt beautifully. And the ball will be placed at the 17 yard line of the Packers. First and ten for Green Bay. The Philadelphia defensive team fanning out now. Out of the huddle come the Packers. Boyd Daller flanking out to the right side. Max McGee about five yards split at the left. Starr dropping back to throw. Going for a long one and he's got a man open. Jerry Canaffle. Up at the 35-yard line, across the 35 to about the 37, hit by Jimmy Carr and Don Burroughs. A beautiful pattern there, and Canaffle was wide open. The ball at the 37. Sec- first down and 10. At the Green Bay 37. McGee flanked way out to the left, and Dowler out to the right side. 
Open field to the left and closed field to the right here. A handoff here to Taylor. Goes right up the middle to the 40-yard line. Hit by Marion Camel and Chuck Weber. On a delay handoff there. But the Philadelphia secondary linebackers come in to plug it up. But a gain there of about four or five yards on the play. Pick up a four on the play. Second down and six. The ball at the 41. Boyd Dowler flanked out to the right. McGee to the left. Fitchak here to Taylor coming around across the 40, but he's stripped up there by Maxie Vaughn on an ankle tackle, and Taylor gets to about the 42. The third down and about five. The ball at the 42. Green Bay moving from right to left. They lead in this ball game three to nothing. Third down and a long five yards to make. Brilliant sunshine here in Philadelphia, and ideal for playing, except for the condition of the field, which is a little frozen. The Dowler flanked once again to the right, and McGee out to the left. Starr going into the air for the first down. Throws the ball, of incomplete, intended here for Max McGee. A low pass that Max couldn't quite hold on to. It's incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and five. Fourth down, the ball at the 41. Max McGee dropping back in punt formation and dropping for safety for Philadelphia. Ted Dean and Tim Brown. McGee will punt from about his own 30-yard line. A high kick that doesn't go very far. Coming over to the left side. It takes a bounce, though, for the Packers and goes out of bounds inside the 20-yard line at the 17. And Philadelphia will take over. First and ten on their own 17. Right in front of our NBC microphones. And the Eagles once more go on the offensive. Green Bay leading 3-0. About four minutes and ten seconds left in this first period. Van Brocklin, Barnes, Dean, and McDonald in the backfield. Retzlaff flanking out to the left side. McDonald to the right. Handoff is to Billy Barnes, who's cutting back in. Gets up to about the 20-yard line, where he's hit by Henry Jordan and Willie Davis. And we'll wait for the officials to mark it. Just over the 20-yard line. A pickup of three. Second and seven, the ball at the Philadelphia 20. McDonald coming out to the right and Rhett's left to the left. Walston's the tight end on the left side. Getting rushed. Van Brocklin's running the ball. A beautiful rush put on by Henry Jordan there. And he made Van Brocklin do something he hasn't done all year. He ran with the ball. And he gets it up to the 20-40 yard line. And the partisan Philadelphia crowd are giving Van Brocklin a big hand. That's very possibly the first time in the three years the Dutchman's been in Philadelphia that he's run with the ball. So Green Bay has accomplished something today. The ball at the 24-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Third down and three to go. Brett Slaff and McDonald split right and left. A short look in, overthrown, intended for Dean. And it's incomplete, covered there by Bill Forrester. So the Eagles again are in a punting situation with fourth down and three to go. Willie Wood and Luke Carpenter in safety for Green Bay. As the Eagles have fourth down and three, the ball still at their 24-yard line. Van Brocklin will punt from about his 15-yard line. Three-nothing, Green Bay leading. Beautiful high spiraling punt going to Willie Wood who takes it at the 40 yard line and is banged down at his own 38 immediately on a racking tackle there by John Wilcox, a rookie from Oregon, 6 foot 5, 230 pounds. And Richie Lucas, who is down on there, is limping off for Philadelphia. So the Packers will put the ball in play. First and 10 at their own 37. 
Boy Daller flanked out to the right, and Max McGee to the left. Taylor and Horning in the backfield. A fake pitch out to Horning. It goes on a second delayed handoff to Taylor, who gets across the 40-yard line. Hit there by Bob Freeman, number 41, and Don Burrows. The left wing and safety man of Philadelphia. The ball placed at the 43. Second down and four at the third 43. Boyd Daller again going right and McGee to the left here. McGee way out to the left side. Horning and Taylor in the backfield. Starr gives it to Horning. He's trying to get outside. Gets across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. A delay handoff to Horning that time. Hit by Jess Richardson and Marion Camel. A right tackle and end on that Philadelphia defensive team. Green Bay leading 3-0 with about two and a half minutes to play in the first period. Third down and about two yards to go. Boyd Dollar flanked out to the right and McGee to the left. Philadelphia defense jumping around now. Handoff delayed there to Horning, sweeping the right side. Gets across the 45 there. He was hit by two men, but he broke right through them. Finally brought down by Don Burrows. Right at midfield. And sufficient for a first down. First and ten for the Packers, right at midfield. The third first down for Green Bay. Boyd Daller going out to the right side, and McGee flanked out to the left. Starr going back to pass this time. Throwing out into the flank here to Gary Knappel, who gets the ball at the Eagle 43-yard line. Hit down by Tom Brookshire immediately. Officials placing the ball up at the 42. Second down and one. Eagle 42-yard line. Max McGee again comes out to the left and Boyd Daller to the right. Open sideline to the right. Goes to Taylor who belts right up the middle, almost gets in the clear and is finally brought down by Chuck Vidnarek after Don Barrows and Chuck Weber had a shot at Taylor, but he went right through. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with the score Green Bay 3, Philadelphia nothing. The 717 from Elmsport. But wait, hold that train for Henry Evans. <laughs> Not me. I'm retired, starting today. I'll be catching fish instead of trains. It's a good feeling to retire and have time for the things you've always wanted to do, for lazy days outdoors. And you can help make your retirement a rich and happy time by saving regularly at an insured savings and loan association. You can build up a substantial supplement to pension and annuities because money you save the insured savings and loan way brings in excellent returns. It grows and it's safe. Insured up to $10,000 by the Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation. Prepare now for your retirement years. Open a savings account at an insured savings and loan association. Then later, you can happily relax while the rest of them scramble for the 717. Back at Franklin Field, this is Jack Whitaker with Blaine Walsh for the championship game of the National Football League for 1960. Green Bay leading 3 to nothing over the Philadelphia Eagles as we're about to start the second period. The Packers now have marched from their own 37 down to the Philadelphia 28 where they have a first down and 10. The last one, a beautiful burst through the middle by Jim Taylor. And the touchdown saved only by a tackle by Chuck Bednarik. Boyd Daller flanking out to the right side. Max McGee split about five yards to the left. Handoff going to Horning. He's running and now he's passing. Throwing a deep one down there. Intended for Boyd Daller, but incomplete and broken up at the last minute by Bobby Freeman. Daller had to jump on him. And for a moment it looked like a touchdown Green Bay. But Freeman got his hand in there at the last moment to break it up. Second down and 10 from the 28. Almost a Green Bay touchdown. 
McGee flanking out to the left, and Dowler comes to the right again. Second down and ten from the Philadelphia Eagles, 28. Star going to the air again. Intended for Boyd Dowler, and complete. Tackled by Bobby Freeman, the pass completed, the Eagle 15. First down and 10 for the Packers at the Eagle 15 yard line on a pass from Star to Dollar. Norm Masters has come in now to replace Forrest Gregg. Green Bay leading 3 to nothing in the opening moments of the second period. Taylor trying to get right through the middle of the line and he gets yardage down to about the 11-yard line hit there by Chuck Weber. Taylor bolted right through the middle of the line. The ball at about the 12. Pick up a three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. The Packers now on a sustained march coming from their 37-yard line. They're moving left to right now. Dollar to the right. McGee flanked way out to the left. Hand off to... Fake hand off to Taylor. Start passing out to Horning, but it's incomplete. Broken up at the last moment there. By Chet Bidnerick, but there's a flag on the play. And let's see. Offsides. I believe against Green Bay, but let's see how he indicates. Referee Ron Gibbs. It is against Green Bay. Offside. So it'll be now second down and 12. The ball at the 17-yard line of Philadelphia. 3-0, Green Bay leading. On a 20-yard field goal by Paul Horning in the first period. We're just a minute and a half into the second period from Franklin Field with 67,000 people looking on for the National Football League Championship of the World. Max McGee flanking out to the left and Boyd Dallard to the right. Horning and Taylor in the backfield with Green Bay. Starr going out to the left flat. Broken up there, intended for Max McGee. Incomplete and broken up by Tom Brookshire. It'll be third down and 12 now for Green Bay from the Philadelphia 17. So far, Green Bay has controlled the ball most of the ball game. This current series, they've gone from their 37-yard line, and they've used 10 plays to do it. They're now third and 12 on the Philadelphia 17. Max McGee going out to the left. Dowler about five yards, split to the right. McGee way out to the left side. Horning, fake the hand off to Horning. Starr going to throw. He's rushed, and it's intercepted, and then dropped. And it's called incomplete. Don Burroughs had the ball for an interception at the Philadelphia 10 and then dropped it. And the officials rule incomplete. Intended there for Gary Canapel. So it will be fourth down and 12. The ball at the Philadelphia 17. And another field goal attempt apparently coming up. Ball Horning flexing his leg. Bart Starr will hold. Horning will kick this. From a 24-yard line. A slight angle from the 24-yard line. The snap. The ball is up. It is good. It is good. There is timeout on the field with the score. Green Bay 6, Philadelphia nothing. <laughs> been saving yesterday. Everyone saves in our family, so we planned this a trip. The easy way with our savings account, and we leave today. Now we planned our green vacation well. Folks at the savings and loan were swelled in a special account. Plans were made, so when we get home, all our bills are paid. We gotta get going to catch the jet. We're gonna have fun, but we won't be in debt. Our savings account and our savings alone will be working for us until we get home. Make your dream vacation come true. 
See what your savings and loan can do. See what your savings and loan can do. Yes, by saving a little every payday at your nearby insured Savings and Loan Association, you can be ready for that dream vacation before you know it and really enjoy it. Start now. Well, the Green Bay Packers have already started. On the second field goal by Paul Horning, they've jumped out to a 6 nothing lead here in the second period of this championship game. With 13 minutes, 12 minutes, and 45 seconds left. Horning kicking off now. Dean and Tim Brown deep for Philadelphia. The kick is short and to the left. Taken by Joe Robb who plays in that secondary defense on this kickoff team, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 26-yard line by Dick Pesonen, number 48 for Green Bay. Six to nothing, the Packers lead. And Philadelphia puts the ball in play at their own 26. And the Philadelphia fans here exhorting their team to go, go, go. Rex laugh, split wide to the left. McDonald about five yards to the right side. Walston a tight right end. Van Brocklin running the club. A quick look in, intended there, and completed to Bobby Walston at about the 32-yard line. A pickup of about six yards. Hit there by Ray Nitschke, number 66, the middle linebacker of Green Bay. So it'll be second and four, the ball at the 32. Green Bay took 11 plays to go from their own 37-yard line until they kicked the field goal from the 24 for that second score. 6-0 they lead. The handoff this time to Barnes. Gets through the hole, across the 35, and finally hit down by Bill Forrester from his right linebacking spot. Helped there by Willie Davis. The ball across the 35 to the 37-yard line, and a first down for Philadelphia. The second first down for Philadelphia in the ballgame. First and ten. The ball at the 37. Red Slap and McDonald split. And Brocklin going out to the flat. And again, almost intercepted by Willie Davis. But picked up here. Let's see what they rule on this. What happened is that Willie Davis coming in there again. Almost intercepted. A flat pass. It bounced back into Van Brocklin's arms. And he threw it again. And it's incomplete. Intended for Ted Dean. Early in the ball game, as a matter of fact, the first play from scrimmage for Philadelphia, it was intercepted by Quinlan. It'll be second down and ten from the 37. Rule is an incomplete pass. Retzlaff flanked to the left and McDonald to the right. Delay handoff there to Ted Dean. He gets through and gets shallow yardage up to about the 45-yard line. Hit there by Henry Jordan and Dan Curry. Ted Dean on a delay handoff, slanting off right tackle, brings the ball up to the 45-yard line of Philadelphia. Third and two for Philadelphia. The score, Green Bay six, Philadelphia nothing. Third and two for Philadelphia at their own 45. 11 minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the second period. A hand off the barn, swinging out right, but Bill Forrester won't let him turn the corner. Number 71, Bill Forrester, playing it beautifully there, refused to be turned in and held off long enough for Jesse Whitman to come up to spill Barnes for a loss of two, three yards. So it'll be fourth down and five, the ball at the 43. And again, Philadelphia faced with a funny situation. Green Bay leading six to nothing. Willie Wood and Luke Carpenter dropping back into safety. Van Brocklin kicking for Philadelphia. Van Brocklin waits a moment and then boots a high spiral. Fair catch signaled for, but the man, Willie Wood, slips and falls down. The ball taken there by John Wilcox. Now let's see what the ruling is. This is a very odd one. We've never seen it. A fair catch signaled for, and as Wood signaled for the fair catch, he slipped as the field is getting slick here, but they're giving it to Green Bay at the point of the fair catch, which is at the 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Packers at their own 20, and they lead in this ball game 6 to nothing. 
Boy Dowler flanking out to the right. Max McGee to the left. Jerry Canapo at a tight right end. Barney and Taylor in the backfield with Starr. A handoff delayed here to Taylor, and he jumps over one man and gets about a yard for his effort, hit finally by Chuck Weber and Don Burrows. A slight mix-up at the Green Bay backfield on the handoff, but Taylor keeps barging his way and actually bulls for about a yard. The ball at the 21. The sun now coming out is melting the top frost on the field, and it's getting a little slick. Boy Dowler to the right. Max McGee a tight left end. Second down and nine from the 21. And off the Horning, across the 20 to the 21, where he's hit down by Jimmy Carr and Joe Robb. And slowed up by Chuck Bednarik, who blew in there. A pickup of a yard, perhaps, on the play. Let's call it third and eight. The ball at the 22. Six-nothing, Green Bay leads. Nine minutes left to play in the second period from Franklin Field, with a record crowd looking on for this championship game. Star coming out of the huddle now as McGee flanked wide to the left and Dowler about 10 yards to the right. McGee going to the air here on third down. Has a man wide open. Taylor is fullback across the 25, down at the 26-yard line by Tom Brookshire. A pass to his fullback out in the flat to the, about the 26-yard line. And it will be fourth down and about three yards to go, so the Green Bay kicking team comes in. Going deep for Philadelphia, number 22, Tim Brown. 5'11", 195 pounds from Ball State Teachers College in Indiana. And Ted Dean, a rookie out of the University of Wichita. Max McGee punting from about his own 17. A low bullet-type kick that goes down to the Philadelphia 44-yard line where it's down there by a Green Bay man. The Philadelphia 44. First and 10 for the Eagles. 6 0. The Packers lead on two field goals by Paul Horning. Eight minutes and fifth, 45 seconds left to play in the second period. McDonald flanked out to the right side and Retz left to the left. A fake handoff as Van Brocklin rolls out to the right side. He hits McDonald in the middle at the Green Bay 45, and Tommy rolls to the 35 before he's hit by Jesse Whittington and Hank Preminger. A first down for Philadelphia as McDonald caught the pass and slanted back down across the Packer 40-yard line to the 35. First and ten for Philadelphia at the Green Bay, 35-yard line. McDonald flanking out right, covered there by Emlyn Tunnell. Retzlaff, a tight left end, Van Brocklin going for a long one, throwing into McDonald. He's got him open at the seven-yard line. McDonald, touchdown. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Van Brocklin stepped back and took all the time in the world. Spotted McDonald open. With about five yards between Emlyn Tunnell and the sideline. Van Brocklin threaded the needle, and Tommy went over after catching the ball at the seven-yard line. The score, Eagles six and Packers six. Extra point attempt now will be made by Bobby Walston. Boston kicking from the 10-yard line. It is good. There is timeout on the field, and the score, Philadelphia 7, Green Bay 6. The Eagles have just taken the lead, 7-6 to six on a touchdown pass of 35 yards, Van Brocklin to McDonald. Two field goals by Horning, the score for Green Bay. The Eagles went two plays, 56 yards for that touchdown. Both passes from Van Brocklin to McDonald. Ted Dean kicking off for Philadelphia. Moore and Simank, deep for Green Bay. It's a long, blistering kick that's going to go out of the end zone and caught by one of the stadium guards. Five yards out of the end zone. 
We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Packers putting the ball in play now. First and ten on their own 20. They trail in this ball game. Seven to six. A tight one here with seven minutes and 50 seconds left. Max McGee flanked out to the left. Boyd Dollar to the right. Horning and Taylor in the backfield with Bart Starr. A long count here. In motion is Taylor. He gets the pitch out. He's being chased and finally hit. And quite out of bounds at the 21-yard line. He was hit by Joe Robb at the 18, knocked by Jimmy Carr at the 19, and Taylor just kept on churning until he went out of bounds at the 21. Don Burroughs finally knocking him out. A great Green Bay offensive line doing a tremendous job, anchored by Jim Ringo at center, and, of course, Fred Thurston and Jerry Kramer at guards, Forrest Craig and Bob Skaronsky at the tackles, and Max McGee and Gary Knappel at the ends. And here they come. McGee flanking out to the left now. Dollar to the right. Second down and nine. The ball at the 21. Starr going back in the air. Throwing a long one down the center. Incomplete. Covered there by Maxie Baum, who has a collision with Chuck Weber. The two linebackers colliding. And I think Maxie is shaken up a bit. The rookie from Georgia, who has played great ball for Philadelphia all year, shaken up on this play as he collided head-on with Don Burroughs in breaking up the pass intended for Gary Knapple. There's timeout on the field with the score. Philadelphia 7, Green Bay 6. What does a man want most in his life? A safe and happy home for his children and his wife. He wants a piece of land he can call his own. A tiny patch of earth where his future may be broke. Be it 50 by 100, more acres by the score, his own piece of land is what a man is working for. When a man wants the money for that home of his own, he goes to see his friends at his savings and loan. Then things begin to hum on that tiny piece of land as all the builder's men start working hand in hand. The walls begin to rise, soon the roof trees overhead, and before you can believe it, all the kids are tucked in bed. Now a man and his family have a home of their own Thanks to their friends at the savings and loan Thanks to their friends at the savings and loan At Franklin Field in Philadelphia for the Green Bay Packers-Philadelphia Eagles championship game. Jack Whitaker and Blaine Walsh to score Eagles 7, the Packers 6. And on that last play, two of the defenders in the backfield for Philadelphia, Maxie Bond, the linebacker, number 55, a rookie from Georgia, and Don Burroughs from Colorado State, acquired late or after the season began by Philadelphia from Los Angeles, collided head-on, but they're both all right and back in the ball game. Two of the most valuable defenders Philadelphia has. Don Burroughs, six foot four and 180 pounds, and nicknamed the Blade by his teammates. Green Bay, third down now, nine from the 21. Dower and McGee split. Starr dropping back to fire. Hits Horning at the 21. He gets up to the 22 because Joe Robb was riding him piggyback all the way. A pickup of one on the play. So it'll be fourth down now and eight to go from the 22 for Green Bay. A punting situation, and Max McGee will drop back to kick for Green Bay, and Ted Dean and Tim Brown will drop back in safety for Philadelphia. The Eagles seven, the Green Bay Packers six. Six minutes and ten seconds left to play in the first half. A brilliant sunshine day, temperature about 40 degrees. McGee gets the pass from center, kicks from his 15, a beautiful high spiral, drifting off now to the left side of the field and taking a Green Bay bounce across the Philadelphia 30 to about the 26 where it rolls dead. The Eagles put it in play, first and 10 at their own 26. Two field goals by Paul Horning gave the Packers a 6-0 edge. And then finally the Eagles' offense began clicking. Two consecutive passes to McDonald from Van Brocklin, a touchdown, and Philadelphia leads 7-6. Now McDonald is split to the right. Retzlaff is about five yards out to the left at the line of scrimmage. Van Brocklin going to the air, has a lot of time now, throwing a long one intended for Retzlaff, and Pete takes the ball at the Green Bay 35. A fantastic catch by Pete Retzlaff, covered all the way by John Simon and Jesse Winton. But the pass was just over their heads and almost over Retzlaff. Great pass for 
protection by the Philadelphia forward line for Van Brocklin, who threw a real bomb to Pete Retzlaff at the 33-yard line. Now Barnsey trying to sweep the right side, can't quite turn the corner. He gets to the 30-yard line. Ray Nitschke, the linebacker, wouldn't give him the extra step to turn the corner. But Barnes brings it out to the Green Bay 30, a pickup of three. It'll be second down. And seven from the 30. Seven to six, the Eagles lead. Second down and seven from the Green Bay 30-yard line. Retzlaff flanked out to the left, and McDonald to the right about five yards. Again, Van Brocklin is getting a rush this time, and the pass is partly blocked. Rushed that time by Dan Curry, and the Dutchman had to get rid of it in a hurry. Incomplete, it'll be third and seven, the ball at the Green Bay 30. Crowd really on its feet on that long pass from the Eagle 26 to the Green Bay 33. Van Brocklin to Retzlaff. And now Retzlaff coming out to the near side, flanking out about 15 yards. McDonald about five yards to the right. And Brocklin going to the air again. A swing pass out to Dean. He's down at the 25. Dukes away from Forrester. Gets away from another man. He's down across the 15. Down to the 10-yard line. Hit down finally by John Simon. First down for Philadelphia. They're sixth in the ball game. As Van Brocklin hits his fullback, Teddy Dean, who goes all the way to the eight-yard line of Green Bay before he was hauled down by John Simon. First and goal for Philadelphia at the eight. There's timeout now called by Green Bay. And in this particular march down the field, still the great play was that tremendous pass from Van Brocklin to Retzlaff. It looked for a while as if the pass was overthrown and passed everybody, but Retzlaff just gave it that extra effort with another step and a leap and caught the ball. And now Ted Dean has just run with a pass down to the Green Bay 8-yard line, where Philadelphia, with 4 minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the half, have a first down and goal to go. Van Brocklin has completed 7 passes out of 12 attempted. And the Packers, Bart Stars, completed 5 out of 12 attempted. Philadelphia having six first downs and the Packers five. The score is Philadelphia seven and Green Bay six. One touchdown against two Paul Horning field goals. And the Eagles, who had tremendous difficulty getting their offense moving in the first period, seem to be gelling somewhat now. Although the Green Bay defense has played admirably, as has their offensive line and their backs. A tremendous crowd here in Philadelphia. The sun coming out and gets warmer by the moment. And the field uh, seems to be holding up fra- rather well. As Blaine Walsh told you in the beginning, it was frozen hard earlier this morning. But now as the sun comes out, it seems to soften up a little bit. And the boys are having some difficulty in some spots of the field, especially from the 30-yard line in, in the center of the field, to the goal line on the east side, just where the action is now. The Eagles have the ball on the 8-yard line, first and goal to go. Three minutes and 30 seconds left to play in this first half of this championship game of 1960. The Eagles 7, the Green Bay Packers 6. McDonald will flank out to the right. Brett Slaff to the left. Bobby Walston will be a tight right end. Barnes and Dean in the backfield. Van Brocklin. Firing to McDonald and it's incomplete in the end zone. Intended for McDonald, incomplete. Covered there by Hank Reminger very beautifully for Green Bay. Incomplete. Second and goal to go now at the eight-yard line. And again, McDonald flanks out to the right side, and Retzlaff to the left. Covered out there by Tunnell, McDonald is. Van Brocklin throwing for Tommy, and it's over his head and incomplete in the end zone. Tunnell covering him all the way, and Hank Reminger. So the Eagles will have third down now and goal to go from the eight-yard line. The Eagles started back on their own 26. And on first down, Retzlaff got it to the Green Bay 33. Then Barnes took it to the eight-yard line, and we've had two incomplete passes here. This will be the seventh play of the series. Three minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the first half. Again, 
Going wide to the right is McDonald. Retzlaff split out to the left. Third and eight. A big play for Philadelphia. A rush is on here. Pass intended for Billy Barnes. But incomplete. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down and goal to go from the eight-yard line. And now the Philadelphia field goal team comes in. Bobby Walston to kick and Sonny Jurgensen to hold. There'll be a slight angle from the left. He'll kick it from the 15-yard line with a slight angle. There's the snap. Kick is up. It is good. It is good. And the score now is Philadelphia 10, the Packers 6. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. WGY, WGFM, Schenectady. Franklin Field, everybody, for the championship game, the Green Bay Packers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles, just with a field goal, have gone ahead now 10 to 6, with three minutes and 10 seconds left to play in this second period. Green Bay jumping out first with two field goals by Paul Horning to lead 6 0, but Philadelphia coming back here in the second period to score a touchdown and a field goal. Tom Moore and John Simak in deep safety now for the kickoff for Green Bay, as Ted Dean will kick off for Philadelphia. The Packers in their gold pants and white jerseys. Philadelphia in green and silver. And so far, the field and the players holding up admirably. And the 67,000 people jammed in Franklin Field are seeing themselves quite a ball game. Dean has just set the ball up on the kicking tee. He goes back to get his run up. The last time, he kicked it completely out of the end zone. Here he comes up on the ball. This one is another long one. Goes into the end zone this time. Where it is down by Tom Moore. And the ball will be brought out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 for Green Bay at the 20. And now the offensive team comes in for Green Bay. McGee, Skaronsky, Thurston, Ringo, Kramer, Greg, Knaffel, Bart Starr, Paul Horning, Boyd Dollar, and Jim Taylor. The champions of the Western Conference. Boyd Dollar now fanning out to the right and Max McGee to the left. Three minutes and five seconds left to play in this first half. Philadelphia leading 10 to 6. A handoff here to Horning. He gets a big hole and bolts right up the middle and is still going across the 35-yard line. Hit finally by Bidneric and Vaughn. A beautiful run by Paul Horning. And nice hole and nice blocking work in the line there by Thurster and Kramer. The ball just across the 35. First and 10 for Green Bay. The Packers with a first and 10 at their 36. Max McGee going out to the left and Boyd Dowling to the right. Knaffel is a tight right end. Long count by Bart Starr. The handoff is to Taylor, who goes try the left side and finds a lot of opposition there by green-shirted Eagles, especially in the person of Marion Camel, the right end, six foot three, two hundred and fifty pounds from the University of Georgia, and Chuck Weber, the middle linebacker, six feet, two hundred and thirty-five pounds from nearby Westchester Teachers College. A pickup of three yards on the play by Taylor. Second down and seven. The ball at the thirty-nine. And now the two-minute warning has been given, the official two-minute warning to both benches. Two minutes left to play in this first half. The Eagles lead 10 to 6 over the Green Bay Packers. Second down and seven for Green Bay from their own 39-yard line. Joe Robb, Jess Richardson, Eddie Kayat, and Marion Camel, the four men on the forward defensive line for Philadelphia. Max Chuck Bidnerick, Chuck Weber, and Maxie Vaughn, the linebackers. Now Boyd Dowler comes flanking to the right. McGee, a tight left end, split about three yards. A handoff to Taylor, who's across the 40 and up to the 45-yard line. Finally hit there by a whole host of Eagles. Led by Eddie Kayette, number 73. And it looks like a timeout being called for here by Green Bay. Ball close to a first down. Just short of the 45-yard line of Green Bay. 
score here. The Eagles 10 and the Green Bay Packers 6. With a minute and 50 seconds left to play in the first half. The Packers have a yard to go for the first down. The ball just short of their own 45. Starr coming over to the sideline to talk to Coach Vince Lombardi. And the sunshine keeps getting warmer by the moment. And the fans here in Franklin Field seem very comfortable. They're cleaning out their cleats down there now as the field gets softer with the rising of the temperatures in Philadelphia. And except for one or two plays in the backfield, there haven't been too many slippery footings out there. Jack, the referee, Ronnie Gibbs, is officiating his third consecutive championship game in the National Football League and his 11th overall. The umpires, Joe Connell of Pittsburgh, head linesman John Heiberger of Carnegie Tech, the back judge, Sam Jean Breckwell of Manhattan, the field judge, Herman Rorig of Nebraska. Right lane, and a fine job they've done so far. Boy Downer flanking out to the right, and Max McGee to the left, third and one at the 46. A minute and 50 seconds left to play in the half. It goes to Taylor. He has stopped at the line of scrimmage, but then slides off magnificently to the right side and gets enough for the first down, I would think. Finally hit by Chuck Bednarik. A first down for Green Bay. The ball at the 48-yard line. Fine second effort there by this great fullback of the Packers, Jim Taylor. Six feet, 215 pounds from LSU. First and ten. Dollar to the right, McGee to the left. Fake handoff all the way. Stark trying to throw out the left side, being rushed. Finally catches Horning at the Eagle 45, and he's run out of bounds across the field by Chuck Weber at the Eagle 44-yard line. Bart Starr doing a beautiful job there. He got a last-minute rush by Marion Camel, but calmly ducked out of the way and hit Paul Horning, who takes the ball out of bounds at the Eagle 44-yard line. Second down and two to go with about a minute and ten seconds left to play in the half. The Eagles lead ten to six. Second down and two at the Eagle 44. Dollar comes to the right. McGee to the left. Starr dropping way back now. Firing long down the middle. Intended there for Gary Knapple, but incomplete. Broken up by Don Burroughs and Bobby Freeman. And now the clock keeps going. A minute and five seconds left. The Eagles lead 10-6. A minute and five seconds left to play in this first half. Championship game of 1960. Third down and two. The ball at the Philadelphia 44. Green Bay huddling back at their own 48-yard line. Coming out of the huddle now, Max McGee fanning out to the left. And Dollar coming very wide to the right. With Knaffel split about five yards at right end. Starr giving it off to Taylor on a beautiful handoff. Taylor getting a little running room across the 40-yard line and out of bounds at the Eagle 35. Chased out there by Tom Brookshire from the University of Colorado. A six-year veteran in the league and one of the best defensive halfbacks in the Eastern Conference. It looks like a first down for Green Bay. Their eighth of the ball game. The ball at the Philadelphia 36-yard line. Fine run by Jim Taylor. Dowler now flanking out to the right. And Max McGee to the left. Firing out. A pass completed to Taylor. And he's going down the sidelines. Finally knocked out at the 20-yard line by Tom Brookshire. Beautiful run there. And Taylor, with that magnificent balance of his, almost kept on his feet and could have gone all the way. The ball is being placed at the Philadelphia 20. A first and 10 for Green Bay. They're ninth in the ball game. And they've got 55 seconds left to play. They trail the Eagles 10 to 6, but they're getting awfully close. First and 10 at the Eagle 20. Dollar to the right. Max McGee to the left. Horning and Taylor in the backfield. Starr going way back to pass now. Down the center. He hits Horning. Horning's got a little room, but he's finally upended by Bobby Freeman, number 41, at the Eagle 13-yard line. A pickup of seven yards on the play, and I believe timeout is called now by Green Bay. 
45 seconds left in this half. And, of course, Green Bay would like the touchdown. And for Bart Starr, that's his eighth completion out of 16 tries in this first half. The Eagles leading 10 to 6 with 45 seconds left to play in the ball game. And the Packers second down with three yards to go. The ball at the Eagle 13. Some nice work being done by that Green Bay line and giving Starr plenty of protection, especially on this last series. Jim Ringo, Jerry Kramer, Fred Thurston, Forrest Craig, Bob Skaronsky, who I understand brought his children in here to Philadelphia for the Christmas holidays. Emlyn Tunnell being the only boy from Philadelphia and the only one really home for Christmas. But this will be the great Christmas present for whichever team wins. The Green Bay Packers against the Philadelphia Eagles from Franklin Field. As the Eagles now, 10-6, to 6, a touchdown and a field goal against two field goals by Paul Horning. Ideal weather conditions, and that's a break because the weather along the whole eastern seaboard has been abominable for the last 10 days. But fortune shining on the National Football League this year. The six home games of the Philadelphia Eagles here in Franklin Field enjoy beautiful weather with a temperature never under 50 degrees. This being the seventh game, they keep their streak intact. 67,000 people on hand, a record crowd. And now the Packers going back into action. They've got 45 seconds to go. Second down and three on the Philadelphia 13. Dowler flanked to the right and McGee to the left. Starr going to the air, throwing out again to 84. Gary Knaffel, who cut around from his right-end position, hit down by Freeman. It's complete. The ball at the Eagles' six-yard line. And now 35 seconds left to play in the ball game. 35 seconds left to play. Star passing, runs out of the hole. He's to the six-yard line, and he's brought down there in a bear hug by Maxie Bond. And the clock going as Green Bay trying to call time to get their field goal team in. They're lining up without a huddle. Horning will try it from about the nine-yard line. Star holding. The clock still going. Five, ten seconds. Five seconds. And there's a flag on the play. Somebody jumped the gun as Jim Ringo, I believe, was pushed off balance by one of the Eagles. The clock now is gone on the scoreboard, but it is unofficial, of course. The Packers, in their haste, did not even huddle. Horning set it up to kick the field goal attempt from the nine-yard line. And it looked as if one of the Eagles jumped the gun here because the first thing we saw was Jim Ringo, the big center, go flying backwards. But let's see what the officials rule. They're not moving the ball. And time now is really at a minimum. The scoreboard clock has about two seconds left on it. But, of course, that's not the official score uh, time. That being kept by the official on the field. Horning will probably get a time for one play here. Star is holding the kick from the nine-yard line. Horning trying for the nine. It was an offside penalty, obviously, which gives the Packers time to get their play off. The kick is up. It is no good. No good. It is wide. Horning's attempt from the nine-yard line is no good. And that is the way the half ends. That's the end of the half. And the score is Philadelphia 10, Green Bay 6. The 717 from Elmsport. But wait, hold that train for Henry Evans. <laughs> Not me. I'm retired, starting today. I'll be catching fish instead of trains. It's a good feeling to retire and have time for the things you've always wanted to do, for lazy days outdoors. And you can help make your retirement a rich and happy time by saving regularly at an insured savings and loan association. You can build up a substantial supplement to pensions and annuities because money you save the insured savings and loan way brings in excellent returns. It grows and it's safe. Insured up to $10,000 by the Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation. Prepare now for your retirement years. Open a savings account at an insured savings and loan association. Then later, you can happily relax while the rest of them scramble for the 717. 
Franklin Field, ladies and gentlemen. Halftime is just about to begin. The first half of this championship game has ended. The score, Philadelphia 10 and the Green Bay Packers 6. It ended on an attempt of a field goal by Green Bay from the nine-yard line by Paul Horning that was wide. And as the players leave the field, the score, the Eagles 10 and the Green Bay Packers 6. And now to bring you up to date on some of the halftime entertainment and some of the statistics that will be coming into our booth here at Franklin Field, we're delighted to turn you over to the voice of the Green Bay Packers, the distinguished Mr. Blaine Walsh. Thank you very much, Jack Whitaker. The band has formed out of the far end of the field. Let's, uh, first of all, recap the scoring in the first half. On the first play of the game, Norm Van Brocklin tried a little swing pass out to the left. It was off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Billy Barnes, and was intercepted by Bill Quinlan at the 14-yard line. The Packers, that's getting the first break, but they could not uh, capitalize on it. Jimmy Taylor carried down to the nine, Horning to the seven, Taylor to the six, and Taylor to the five. A yard short of a first down, and the Eagles took over. On the next series, Ted Dean, the Eagle fullback, went through for a nice gain of about ten yards and fumbled. It was recovered by Green Bay at the 22-yard line. The Packers' drive this time was stopped at the 13. But this time, the Packers elected to try a field goal, and Paul Horning was successful, kicking one from the 20-yard line with uh, 8 minutes, 45 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Green Bay led 3 to nothing. With the second quarter, just a minute and 45 seconds old, Horning kicked another field goal, this one 24 yards, and the Packers led by a score of 6 to nothing. About midway in the second quarter, the Eagles started to roll after the first quarter was played, for the most part, in Eagle territory. The Eagles failing to get the ball into Green Bay territory at all in the first period. But uh, about midway in the second quarter, Van Brocklin hit Tommy McDonald for a 35-yard scoring play. And Walston converted to put the Eagles out in front by a score of 7-6. to six. The Eagles scored again with uh, Van Brocklin throwing to Retzloff for 41 yards down to the 33. Then another pass to Ted Dean carried the ball down to the 8-yard line. Well, the Packers held, and the Eagles sent Bobby Walston in to try a field goal, and he kicked one from the 15-yard line to make the score 10-6. to That is the score here at the half. Now let's take a look at uh, some of the entertainment going on during the halftime intermission here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. The uh, Archer Epler Musketeers, senior drum of Bugle Corps, representing post-979 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars and the American Legion. This unit is the 1960 Pennsylvania State Champions and was runner-up of the national championship in Miami, Florida this year. We have other groups here that will be entertaining during the half. We'll try to spot them for you as they come onto the field. I think this first half of the ball game this afternoon amounted to about what we expected, featuring mainly the passing of Norm Van Brocklin, hitting uh, Tommy McDonald and Pete Retzloff with regularity, and for a couple of long gainers, as I pat- uh, pointed out earlier, and uh, also the ground game of Green Bay with Paul Horning and Jimmy Taylor doing most of the carrying. However, the Eagle defense this afternoon has proved to be plenty tough, and Bart Starr has been doing uh, quite a bit of passing with just so-so success. On this last drive, it was uh, Starr hitting on the short passes to Canapel and to Taylor and Horning, moving the ball down to the Eagle six-yard line. And then, as Jack pointed out, with just a few seconds remaining, they tried the hurry-up field goal. It was wide to the left, not good, and the score remained Eagles 10, the Green Bay Packers 6. We're going to swing over to the other microphone now, and I may return the compliment by introducing the distinguished Jack Whitaker, the voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. Jack? Thank you very much, Blaine, and a Merry Christmas from Philadelphia to all you boys who couldn't spend Christmas at home. We're listening kindly, ladies and gentlemen, to the Arch Epler Musketeers Senior Drum and Bugle Corps, which represents post-979 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars and the American Legion. And this particular unit is the 1960 Pennsylvania State Champions and was runner-up at the national championship in Miami, Florida this year. Let's see if we can pick a little of them up, huh? Well, as we gave the cue, they 
finished right on cue. The Arch Tepler American Legion unit, and they're getting a very nice hand from this capacity crowd. There are no strangers to the Philadelphia Eagle fans because they've entertained here before. And now to the right of us at the west side of the field, the second half of the show is the 200-member Cardinal Doherty High School Band of Philadelphia. These two are 1960 Philadelphia champions. All right, the Cardinal Doherty Band now playing Winter Wonderland. you just tuned in. The score is Philadelphia 10 and the Green Bay Packers 6. And the third quarter of today's game will be brought to you by Buick. And I don't believe it. A Buick of that price? Well, I'll tell you, I'm talking about the Buick Special. It's got Buick's clean look of action. Buick Power. Buick Go. Buick Comfort. The Special is a Buick. Yet it gives you the extra gas mileage of the compacts. Saves gas like the compacts. And regular gas at that. How do they do it? Well, the Buick Special has extra special power from that V8 engine. Lighter, livelier, because this V8 is made of aluminum. They've turned dead weight into live action. I get it. More power per pound. Buick power, yet it saves gas like the compacts. Very special. Buick special. The go, the ride, the room of a Buick, yet the savings of the compacts. Get on over to your Buick dealer and find out all about the special. A Buick at that low price? Yes, sir, Blaine. Still at halftime here at Franklin Field, ladies and gentlemen. With the Philadelphia Eagles enjoying a halftime advantage over the Green Bay Packers of 10 to 6. As the teams go into their locker rooms now, and with the coaching staffs of both these ball clubs, we're expecting to see a real great second half. As Tom Miller of the Packers pointed out, it looked like two fighters just feeling each other out here in the first half, and it's as good a description as we can give you of the first half action. No wide open stuff. A few mistakes by both sides. A little slow, a little wary, a lot of respect for each other. These are two fine ball clubs, two finely coached ball clubs. And now the coaches go to work in this halftime period, and I'm sure both sides have seen things that they want to change and new things that they want to put in. And we're anxious for the second half action to get underway because we think it's going to be a real rock'em sock'em affair. Ten to six is no lead at all in professional football, as you know. And these are two finely matched teams, both in good physical condition and under fairly ideal weather conditions here for the playoff game. Now let's go down on the field again and pick up the Cardinal Doherty Band as they give us a little old Lang Syne and a New Year's Eve celebration. here as they let loose a whole flock of multicolor balloons that are flying up now to the second deck and up above Franklin Field itself and over the southwest part of Philadelphia. Gaily colored balloons signifying New Year's Eve, which will be on us in a very few days, as you know, and a holiday atmosphere prevailing at halftime in this championship game of the National Football League. And the wind is taking the balloons now and blowing them over here to the north stands, out over Franklin Field and the campus of the University of Pennsylvania, which it adjoins. Cardinal Doherty Band giving a fine exhibition down on the field now of playing and dancing. They go into the Golden Slippers, the traditional theme song of the Philadelphia Mummers Parade, which is held every New Year's Day up and down Broad Street in Philadelphia. sun now rising above the big rim of Franklin Field and covering the entire playing area with sunshine with the exception of the far sideline, the south sideline, which is just beginning to get the shadow of the upper tier. That shadow will lengthen as the afternoon goes on. 
It is 1.30 Philadelphia time, Eastern Standard Time. So we have plenty of daylight left. They move the kickoff up to 12 o'clock, as you know, because in case of a sudden death or a very overcast and cloudy day, darkness may have taken over. There are no lights in Franklin Field, and that's the reason for the early kickoff of noon. But it does not seem to have bothered the 67,000 people. high school band performing on the field. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WGY, 810 on your dial, and WGFM, the General Electric Station, Schenectady. Back at Franklin Field, ladies and gentlemen, at halftime in the championship game of the National Football League. Philadelphia Eagles 10, the Green Bay Packers 6, and there's a hand from the 67,000 people in Franklin Field for the halftime entertainment of the Cardinal Doherty High School in Philadelphia. And now the Green Bay Packers have come out of their dressing room on the far side and the Philadelphia Eagles on the near side. The Eagles bench being across the way from us, the Packers right below us. Gold and white for Green Bay with green numerals and green and silver for the Eagles. And the second half about to get underway, Philadelphia leading 10-6 in this 1960 championship game as the halftime entertainers have marched across the field and are now just about off. Coaches now, trainers and doctors filing out, bringing up the rear as the entourage come out from both dressing rooms. And we'll be having our second action, second half action in just a moment. As we said, we expect it to be a rip-roaring second half. Two fine football teams who won their division championships through no mistakes, but by playing fine football and beating the best there is in the National Football League. And they're playing today with almost ideal conditions to see who will win the title of the champion of the world. The referee, Ron Gibbs at the center of the field. Green Bay has the choice here of the second half, and no doubt will receive. They're huddling down in front of us here on the near sideline. Across the way, the Eagles jumping up and down, flexing their muscles. And to tell you all about this second half action, which we expect to be a real bruiser... This is a very fine colleague, the voice of the Green Bay Packers, Blaine Walsh. Blaine? All right, thank you, Jack. The Packers are huddling down here in front of the bench. Right on the center of the pack is head coach Vince Lombardi. The Eagles have gathered around Buck Shaw on the far side of the field. Buck Shaw has announced that this is his last year as head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And Norm Van Brocklin says that he plans on retiring after today's game. All set to go now. The Packers take the field. They will receive. They send Johnny Simak and Tom Moore back. They'll be on the goal line. Teddy Dean comes out now and will tee up the ball and will kick off for the Eagles. Philadelphia leads Green Bay by a score of 10 to 6. 67,000 plus out here today. The largest crowd ever to watch a National Football League championship game at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. Herman Rorick, one of the officials, hands the ball to Ted Dean. This fella can really boot that ball. He kicked off a couple of times in the first half and booted the ball well back into the end zone. 
Johnny Simak on the near side. Tom Moore on the far side for Green Bay on the goal line. There's the whistle. The Eagles advance. Dean gets his toe into the ball. A shorter kick this time taken by Simak at the 10. He's at the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. Straight up the middle. He's hit at the 30 and down at the 32-yard line. Johnny Simak with a nice return of 22 yards. First down and 10 for the Packers at the 32-yard line. He was stopped by Johnny Wilcox. First down and 10 for Green Bay. They send their offensive unit in there. They're huddling. They break the huddle. First man out, Jimmy Ringo. Down over the ball. Max McGee to the left. Boyd Dowler set to the right. Morning and Taylor are back. Bart Starr calls out the signals. Looks over that Eagle defense. Taylor in motion to the right. A handoff to Horning who tries left tackle. Gets through there across the 35. Drives to about the 38-yard line where he is stopped by Maxie Bond and Chuck Weber. The left and middle linebackers respectively. The unpile, the ball is at the 37-yard line. A gain of five yards by Paul Horning. Second down and five. Jimmy Ringo open the hole for Horning that time. Packers come out this time with a closed end. Knapple on the left side. Max McGee split way out to the left. Boyd Dowler split out about ten yards to the right. Taylor and Horning in the backfield with Bart Starr. Starr takes the ball, drops back, gives to Jimmy Taylor, who gets an opening up the middle, drives across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Jimmy Taylor, driving hard up the middle, carries very close to a first down. I believe we'll have an official's timeout for a measurement. The ball is... At the 42-yard line, approximately. Timeout for a measurement. The chain gang moves in from the near side of the field. Chuck Weber and Don Burroughs teamed up to make the stop that time. They place the chain down, and it is a first down for Green Bay. Chuck Bednarik is playing both ways for the Eagles today. He is their offensive center and one of the linebackers. The Iron Man stunt. A first down for Green Bay. Jimmy Taylor getting five yards. First down and ten for the Packers on their own 42-yard line. Again, they're out of the huddle. Starr looks over the Eagle defense, takes the ball, fakes a handoff, rolls out to the right, throws a long pass intended for Dollar. It is batted down at the last moment by Don Burroughs. Pass intended for Dollar down on the Eagle 30-yard line inside the 30. Nice defensive maneuver by Don Burroughs, who batted it down just when it looked as though Boyd Dollar might take it. Pass incomplete. Second down and ten for the Packers on their own 42-yard line. The Eagles lead by a score of ten to six. The second half, less than two minutes old. Franklin Field in Philadelphia, the scene of action. We had a fast and furious, hard-fought first half here today. And we expect more fireworks in the second half. Again, the Packers out of the huddle, lined up at the 42, second down at 10. Here's Starr dropping back the pass. He drops way back, throws a screen pass to Horning, and he is hit and down behind the line of scrimmage. Pass complete to Paul Horning for a loss of about three yards. Jess Richards was the man who, Richardson, put the rush on Starr that time. He had to hurry his throw. So the pass is complete, but the Packers lose three yards. So it is third down and 13 on their own 39-yard line. Joe Robb, defensive left end. Marion Campbell, defensive right end. Jeff Richardson and Ed Kayak. They form the big four up front for Philadelphia. Jan Green Bay out of the huddle. McGee to the left, Dollar wide to the right. Canapple the right end. Horning and Taylor are back. Here's Starr dropping back to pass. He looks, he throws a short one. Complete to Taylor with the 42. Gets away to the 45. Is hit by Jimmy Carr. Fumble the ball. It's picked up by Dollar. Or did he lateral to Dollar? The play, nevertheless, was stopped at the 46-yard line. Jimmy Carr was the man who hit him. So they gained seven yards on the play. So it is fourth down about six for Green Bay on its own 46-yard line. And the Packers will send Max McGee back into punt formation. He'll be punting from about his own 35. Going back deep are Ted Dean and Timmy Brown for the Eagles, standing back near the 10-yard line. Here's the pass from center. McGee gets the kick away. Beautiful spiral coming down to Dean, down at the 5-yard line. He comes back up, gets away from one man, gets away from another, comes across the 10, but is hidden down near the 15-yard line. Steve Meilinger was the man who hit him and stopped him. The umpire moved the ball in 20 yards from the near side of the playing field and spotted down at the 14-yard line. So the Eagles have possession for the first time in the second half. First down and ten. They send their offensive unit back in there. Van Brocklin at quarterback. Billy Barnes. 
and Ted Dean are the running backs. Tommy McDonald sets wide to the right now with Brett Slop out to the left as they come out of the huddle. Van Brocklin takes the ball, drops back, looks for a receiver, throws a swing pass, incomplete, intended for Teddy Dean. At about the 10-yard line, pass incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Eagles. They have the ball on their own 14-yard line. Philadelphia leads by a score of 10 to 6. A four-point difference here. With 11 and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Again, Philadelphia comes out of the huddle. Tommy McDonald out wide to the right. Brett Slop in close on the left side. Here's Van Brocklin giving off to Billy Barnes. He's hit but gets away. Comes up across the 15 to the 20. Is hit by Jess Whittenden and stopped at the 22-yard line. Nice run that time by Billy Barnes. Carrying to the 22-yard line, a gain of eight yards. Third down and two for the Eagles on their own 22-yard line. Dan Curry, Ray Nitschke, and Bill Forrester are the linebackers for Green Bay. Willie Davis and Bill Quinlan, the defensive ends. Here's Van Brocklin down under the center again. Calls out the signals, takes the ball, looks for a receiver. Throws. The pass is batted down, almost intercepted by Henry Jordan. Bill Quinlan broke in there fast and hit Van Brocklin. The pass was almost intercepted by Henry Jordan. It is incomplete. Fourth down and two for the Eagles on their own 22-yard line. So they sign in their punting team. Van Brocklin will be back in deep on formation. Back here to double safety for the Packers. Are Willie Wood on the near side and Lou Carpenter on the far side. Van Brocklin will be punting from the 10-yard line. The Eagle line is set. Here's the pass from center. Van Brocklin rushed. Ooh, they all broke in there, but he got the kick away. Here is the ball coming down to Willie Wood at the 30-yard line. He cuts back upfield. He's at the 35. It's going to be stopped at the 36-yard line. The Packers really put the rush on Van Brocklin that time, but he got the kick away. And a beautiful punt it was, taken by Willie Wood, just inside the 30-yard line. He brings it down to the 36. Stopped by Bednarik and Tim Brown. So the Packers have possession. First down and 10 on their own 36-yard line. Packers out of the huddle. Same offensive unit. Horning and Taylor are back. Dollar on the right side. The right end is Canapple. He's set on the left side this time, however. Here is Paul Horning trying the left side. Gets up across the 40. Still going to the 45 and drives to the 50. Paul Horning running beautifully for just about 20 yards and a first down on the Eagle 49-yard line. Morning, going nicely. Jerry Kramer opened the hole for him that time. Chuck Weber was the man who made the tackle. First down and ten for the Packers at the Eagle 49-yard line. Paul Horning found a nice opening that, si- uh, that time over the left side of his own line and carries into Philadelphia territory. Bart Starr brings the Packers out of the huddle again. Takes the ball, takes a pitch out, gives to Jimmy Taylor. He gets an opening up the middle, down to the 40, to the 35, hit from behind by Bobby Freeman, and stopped right at the 35-yard line. Jimmy Taylor going 14 yards down to the 35-yard line. The Eagles lead by a score of 10 to 6. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Another first down for the Packers, first and 10. On the Eagle 35-yard line. Green Bay comes out of the huddle again. Again, Starr calls out the signals, takes the ball, gives to Horning, trying the left side, gets an opening, upset as he crosses the line of scrimmage, and goes for about four yards to the 31-yard line. Paul Horning carrying. Kramer and Thurston leading the way again. Those two big guards in there, stopped by Marion Campbell and Maxie Bond. The ball at about the 31-yard line. Four-yard gain, second down and six for Green Bay. On the Eagle, 31-yard line. Again, the Packers come out of the huddle. Starr sets Dollar wide to the right as a flanker. McGee split out about seven yards to the left. Starr takes the ball, pitches back to Jimmy Taylor, coming around the right side, gets a nice block, drives down very close to the 25-yard line before he is really racked up by Marion Campbell and Johnny Nocera. Johnny Nocera hitting very hard in there. They move the ball in and spot it down. The yard marker has been rubbed out at about that spot. It's a little difficult to tell exactly where it is, but it looks like the 26-yard line. (laughs) 
So it's third down, about three for the Packers. Ball down very close to the 26-yard line. Here is Bart Starr down into the center again. He takes the ball, gives to Paul Horning, coming out of the right side, hit by Benarik at the 25, and stopped at the 25. The young pile, and will put the ball down pretty close to that 25-yard line. The Packers would have to get inside the 25 to about the 24 for a first down. A Packer was injured on the play, and a timeout has been called. I think it is Paul Horning who was injured on the play. Stretched out down there. It is Paul Horning. So we have a timeout on the field. The score, the Philadelphia Eagles 10, the Green Bay Packers 6. Biggest sales success in years. That's the story of the 61 Buick. If you've read the automotive news, you know Buick is having a tremendous year. Not only against his own past record, but more important, Buick's share of market is up. There are so many reasons. The Buick look. Award-winning, clean look of action. Handsome, yet no ostentation. Buick performance. Gas saving. Powerful Wildcat engine. Turbine drive transmission. The smoothest, yet liveliest automatic you can own. The Buick ride. Better than ever with smooth riding, control arm suspension. Buick Comfort, Buick Luxury, wider, softer seating, more stretch-out room, handsomely designed seat fabrics. Yes, this is a Buick to write home about. No wonder sales are zooming. The full-size Buick is available in three great series, La Sabra, Invicta, and Electra. Find out what all the shopping's about firsthand at your quality Buick dealer today. has left the ball game, but he moved off the field under his own power. Seems to be okay. Tom Moore has replaced him. Packers out of the huddle again. Fourth down. And about two yards to go for the first down. Fourth and about two for Green Bay. Here is a handoff to Jimmy Taylor. He is hit by Bednarik on the line of scrimmage. Fights for yardage. And we'll know in a moment whether or not he made it. The referee, Ronnie Gibbs, in there, plants his foot firmly and says he got this far. We might have to measure. It is very close. Chuck Weber teamed up with Bednarik that time to make the tackle. We will have an official's timeout for a measurement. The Packers driving down inside the Eagle 25-yard line. Jimmy Taylor. And they slow going out there. Is have, having a little difficulty getting a, a start. But he managed to get a little head of steam that time. Got a step in there and drove in very hard. And it is short of a first down. Short of a first down, the Eagles take over. Short by just inches. And the Eagles take over, first down and ten. On their own 24-yard line. Philadelphia leads by a score of ten to six. Fine, strong defensive unit holding the Packers. So Van Rockland comes back onto the field with Billy Barnes and Teddy Dean in the backfield. Tommy McDonald is the flanker man, set on wide to the right. Van Rockland takes the ball, gives to Billy Barnes, trying the right side. He runs smack into Willie Davis as he crosses the 25 and is driven way back. Ray Nitschke and Bobby Walston in there, staring each other down, but one of the officials jumped in between them. A few words spoken, that is all. They move the ball in. And spotted down at about the 27-yard line. Billy Barnes getting three yards. Second down and seven for the Eagles. Again, Philadelphia breaks its huddle. Retzloff coming way out to the left. Here is Van Brocklin with the ball, dropping back to pass. He's looking. He throws a long one intended for Retzloff. It is incomplete. Threw it just beyond him, down to the Packers' 30-yard line. Wittenden and Simak racing back with Retzloff. Pass incomplete. Or that Van Brocklin can really crank up and throw the long one. In the first half, he hit Retzlaw with a pass, a long one such as that, for a 41-yard game. Third down and seven for the Eagles on their own 27-yard line. Eagles.
Eagles move back into their huddle. In the front line for Green Bay, Davis, Hanner, Jordan, and Quinlan. Van Brocklin again with the ball, dropping back to pass. He looks, he throws one up the middle. It is complete to Connor McDonald in the 50. He's down to the Packer 40, hit there by Jess Whittenden, and down to the Packer 40. Nice reception by Tommy McDonald. Cutting in from his flanker spot, wide to the right. Took the pass in stride at the 50-yard line. Was hit low and upset by Whittenden, stopped right at the Green Bay 40-yard line. So they gained 43 yards on that play. First down and 10 for the Eagles. On the Green Bay 40-yard line. Tommy McDonald set out to the right again. The ends are in close. Van Brocklin takes the ball, gives to Billy Barnes, trying the right side. He can't find an opening in there, but he does fight his way ahead down across the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Stopped by Henry Jordan with help from Willie Davis. Ball of the Green Bay 33-yard line. Billy Barnes getting seven yards, second down and three. He was hit as he crossed the line of scrimmage, but he managed to move down to the 33 anyway. Once again, Philadelphia moves out of the huddle. McDonald wide to the right, Retzlaff set out to the left. Van Brocklin down into the center, calls out the signals. The ball is snapped, given this time to Teddy Dean, who drives the right side of his own line. Off tackle, gets down inside the 30. To the Packer 28-yard line. A first down for the Eagles. Ray Nitschke making the tackle. First down and 10 for the Eagles at the Packer 28-yard line. Philadelphia, leading by a score of 10 to 6, is on the march. Again, Van Brocklin with the ball. Gives to Billy Barnes, who was hit behind the line of scrimmage and stopped at the 30-yard line. He lost a couple of yards. Henry Jordan breaking through. Hit him just as he took the ball from Van Brocklin. Ball resting right on the 30, so it is second down and 12 for the Eagles. The deep men in the Green Bay defensive unit, the left cornerbacker is Greminger, the right side is Jess Whittenden, the deep men are Tunnell and Simon. The Eagles out of the huddle again. Van Brocklin takes the ball, drops back to pass. He looks, he throws, the pass complete the wall from the 15, he's at the 10. Hit from behind and down to the 5. Johnny Simon riding him down at the five-yard line. Bobby Walston taking a pass straight up the middle from Van Brocklin. A 25-yard gain and the first and goal to go on the five-yard line. Well, the Packers are having trouble stopping those Van Brocklin passes this afternoon. Three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Philadelphia out of the huddle. Here's Van Brocklin pitching the ball back to Ted Dean coming wide to the right. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Drives across the five to about the four-yard line. These Eagles who lead the Packers by four points, ten to six. Driving deep in the Packer territory. Teddy Dean carrying the ball. Stopped by Bill Quinlan at the four-yard line. Second and goal to go. Gain of a yard on the play. Again, the green-shirted Eagles break out of the huddle. Tommy McDonald set wide to the right. Van Brocklin down into the center. Red Narek is the big center. The ball is snapped. Fake handoff. Van Brocklin rolling out to the right. Throws a pass. Intercepted in the end zone by Simank. And the Packers will have the ball first down and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Well, that stops the threat. A big interception by Johnny Simak. The pass intended for Tommy McDonald in the end zone. Intercepted by Simank. And the score remains. Philadelphia 10, Green Bay 6. Packers take over, first down and 10. On their own 20-yard line. The Packers' second interception of the game. The offensive unit back in there again. Bart Starr, the quarterback. Tom Morris in the backfield with Jimmy Taylor. Here's Starr going back to pass. He's looking, gets nice protection. Throws along one up the middle, intended for McGee. Incomplete at the 45-yard line. Back there were Chuck Weber and Tom Brookshire with McGee. Pass was thrown beyond all three of the men. Incomplete. Second down and ten. Packers in possession on their own 20-yard line. Paul Horning was injured on the Packers' last series of downs. He moved off the field and appeared to be okay. But he has not played since. So Tom Moore and Jimmy Taylor are the running backs in there for Green Bay. Boyd Dollar, the flanker man. Knappel, the right end. McGee, the left end. This time, McGee wide.
to the left is the flanker. Dollar moves up on the line of scrimmage. An official's timeout for a clean football. Ronnie Gibbs moved in there, throws the other ball off the field, gets a clean one. Spots it down right at the 20-yard line. Second down and 10 for Green Bay. Packers break their huddle. Jimmy Ringo down over the ball. Greg and Skoronsky are the tackles. Thurston and Kramer are the guards. Here is Starr. Take with the ball. Dropping back the pass. Throws one complete to Taylor at the line of scrimmage. He's hit him down immediately by Don Burroughs. No gain on the play. A little safety valve pass there from Starr to the fullback, Jimmy Taylor. No gain. Third down and ten for the Packers. On the own 20-yard line. Vince Lombardi moving back and forth in front of the Packer bench down here below us. Red Cochran, one of his assistants alongside him. Phil Bankston is there, too. And Bill Austin. Packers out of the huddle again. Third down and ten. Star down under the center. Call signals. Takes the ball and drops back to pass. He looks. He throws a long one. Intended for Dollar. Incomplete. Dollar leaped high. Trying to make the catch at the 45-yard line. But he could not reach it. Jimmy Carr covering on the play for Philadelphia. So it is fourth down and ten for the Packers on their own 20-yard line. And they'll send in their punting team. Let's pause for station identification. This is WGY 810 in your dial and WGFM Schenectady. Up to the Eagle 45 yard line. That's McGee back in punt formation, standing inside the 10. Took the ball, waited for a moment, and ran right straight upfield. He had to get to the 30 for a first down. He made that easily. He was still at top speed. Carried to the 40, then across the midfield stripe, and down to the Eagle 45 yard line. First down and 10 for Green Bay. On the Eagle 45. Ted Dean, one of the deep men for the Eagles, made the tackle. So the Packers still have the ball. Here is Bart Starr giving to Tom Moore, going wide to the left, having trouble turning the corner, and he is thrown for a loss. Back into Packer territory, stopped at the 48-yard line. Tom Moore, on a left-end sweep, is thrown for a loss by Tom Brookshire. A loss of six yards on the play. So it is second and 16 for Green Bay. Packers again come out of the huddle. 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Eagles lead 10 to 6. Green Bay out of the huddle again. Starr down under the center. Has Dollar set wide to the right as a flanker. Starr drops back to pass. He looks. He throws one. It's complete, incomplete. In and out of the arms of Tom Moore at the 42-yard line of Philadelphia. Maxie Vaughn was covering on the play. Clock stops automatically with the incompleted forward pass. Third down and 16 for Green Bay. On its own 49-yard line. Well, that was quite a surprise. We haven't seen that all year with the Packers. Fourth down and 10. Sent Max McGee into punt formation. Max took the ball, waited momentarily, and then ran with it. Going 45 yards to the Eagle, 45-yard line. 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Packers out of the huddle again. Ringo down over the ball. Starr calls out the signals. Takes the ball, drops back to pass. Looking for a receiver. He throws one up the middle. It is complete to Knapple. Down to the 35-yard line. He is hidden down immediately at the 34. Step by Burroughs and Freeman. And a first down for Green Bay. At the Eagle, 34-yard line. The gun sounds ending the third quarter. At the end of the third period, here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia, the score is Philadelphia Eagles 10, the Green Bay Packers 6. Well, Blaine, I don't believe it. A Buick at that price? Uh Uh-huh. A Buick at that low price. The Buick special. But it's got Buick's clean look of action. 
That's right. Buick Power. Buick Go. Buick Comfort. The special is a Buick. Yet it gives you the extra gas mileage of the compacts. Same gas like the compacts. And regular gas at that. How in the world do they ever do it? The Buick special has extra special power from that V8 engine. Lighter, livelier, because this V8 is made of aluminum. They turn dead weight into live action. I get it. More power per pound. Buick power. Yet it saves gas like the compacts. Very special. Buick special. The go, the ride, the room of a Buick. Yet the savings of the compacts. Get on over to your Buick dealer and find out all about the special. A Buick at that low price. Now, on behalf of Buick and your authorized quality Buick dealer, we want to wish you all a very happy New Year and thank you for making the 61 Buick such a tremendous success. The third quarter has been presented by your Buick dealer. The fourth quarter of today's game is brought to you by the High Grade Food Products Corporation. Who makes the beat? Makes the meat. Better the meatiest of meat. Why, high grade. Why, high grade. So tasty, you'll agree. Such wholesome quality. Demand. This famous brand. H Y G R A D E. A plus to B S. Why, high grade. Hot dog. High grade. It's best. Back at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. The fourth quarter underway. Packers had the ball first down and ten. John Moore just carried the ball down inside the Philadelphia 25 to the 23-yard line. And a first down for Green Bay. First down and ten for the Packers. With Tom Moore carrying for 11 yards. So Green Bay trailing by four points as we start the fourth quarter. Is down deep in Philadelphia territory. Packers break the huddle. Boyd Dower moves out of the right. Max McGee to the left side. Bart Starr is the quarterback. Tom Moore and Jimmy Taylor are the running backs. Starr down under the center. Calls signals. Takes the ball. Gives to Jimmy Taylor who finds an opening in the middle. Goes across down inside the 20. Stopped at the 18-yard line. Bednarik and Weber with Marion Campbell also in on the play. He carries to the 18-yard line. A gain of five. Second down and five for the Packers on the Philadelphia 18-yard line. The pack moves back into its huddle. Just into the fourth quarter now. 67,000 fans looking on here. The championship game for the National Football League championship. The Packers and the Eagles. Bart Starr brings the Packers out of the huddle again. Down into the center. Ball signals, takes the ball, gives to Tom Moore, coming around the left side, cuts back in, he's down across the 15, and to the 10-yard line before he is stopped. Bednarik and Tom Brookshire closing in to make the tackle right at the 10-yard line. And another first down for Green Bay. Nice block that time by Gary Knavel, another by Jerry Kramer. Packers have the ball, first and 10 the ball resting just outside the 10-yard line. I don't believe it is close enough to call it first and goal. First down and 10 at the 10-yard line. Starr brings him out of the huddle. Calls out the signals again. Takes the ball. Gives to Jimmy Taylor, who finds an opening on the left side. Runs into one man, but manages to drive down to about the 6-yard line. That was Don Burroughs, with some help from Tom Brookshire, who made the stop. And it looks as though an eagle was hurt on the play. Burroughs is getting up slowly. And a timeout is called by the Eagles. There's timeout on the field with the score. Philadelphia 10, Green Bay 6. Now, a meaty message from High Grade. Who makes the meat? Makes the meat. That are the meatiest of meat. Why, High Grade. Why, High Grade. High Grade makes the meatiest, the tastiest of all canned luncheon meats. High Grade's party loaf. So tasty because it's a blend of tender pork and sweet, juicy beef. Cooked and seasoned to perfection. High Grade's party loaf. Ounce for ounce, America's tastiest, thriftiest luncheon meat. Also try High Grade's delicious beef stew, zesty chili con carne, and tasty corned beef hash. 
Food stores now feature a complete selection of high-grade canned meats, including Vienna sausage and potted meat. H-Y-G-R-A-D-E. My high grades. Hot dog. High grades. It's best. Back at Franklin Field in Philadelphia again. This is Blaine Walsh with Jack Whitaker. The Eagles lead the Packers by a score of 10 to 6. The fourth quarter, less than two minutes old, Don Burroughs was injured on the last play. He is still down on the ground down here at the seven yard line at Philadelphia, and he's being assisted off the field now. He was shaken up on the play and might have suffered a leg injury. A couple of men from the Philadelphia bench are assisting him off the field. And Bobby Jackson has come into the game to take Burroughs' spot. Bobby Jackson, a rookie from Alabama, now in the ball game for the Eagles. When play is resumed, it'll be second down and seven for Green Bay. They have the ball on the Philadelphia seven-yard line. Tom Moore and Taylor are in the backfield with Bart Starr and Boyd Dollar for Green Bay. Packers trail by four points, but they're driving down very deep into Eagle territory now. Jimmy Ringo, the center. Fred Thurston, left guard. Jerry Kramer, right guard. Forrest Gregg, at right tackle. Bob Skaronski, at left tackle. McGee and Knapple are the ends. Packers out of the huddle now. Second down and seven. At the Eagles' seven-yard line. Start on the center. Calls out the signals, takes the ball, looks for a receiver. Throws one complete to McGee in the end zone for a touchdown for Green Bay. The Packers just took the lead. A seven-yard scoring pass from Bart Starr to the left end. Max McGee sliding in from his left end spot. And the Packers go out in front by a score of 12 to 10. Paul Horning, who was injured earlier, now moves back onto the field. And he will try the extra point. So the Packers, who led at 1.6 to nothing, then trailed 7 to 6 and 10 to 6, regained the lead by a score of 12 to 10. Packers out of the huddle. They're lined up. The ball is placed and kicked. The kick is perfect. The extra point by Horning is good. And the score now, the Green Bay Packers, 13, the Philadelphia Eagles, 10. Next kickoff taken by Teddy Dean, who carries up across midfield and down into Packer territory. A 60-yard return by Ted Dean. Stopped or forced out of bounds by Willie Wood. It looked for a moment as though Ted Dean might go all the way. He was the last man. Willie Wood was the last man who could get him. And get him he did at the 40-yard line. First down and 10 for the Eagles on the Green Bay 40. Here's Van Brocklin back to pass. He's looking. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage. And he is thrown for a loss. He got away from the man, Tanner, who hit him behind the line of scrimmage. Moved ahead across the 40 and was thrown down by Willie Davis at the 38-yard line. But a penalty marker was thrown. see against whom the penalty will be called. Against Green Bay, defensive holding, five-yard penalty and a first down for the Eagles. The ball now for a 31-yard line. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Here's Van Brocklin giving to Ted Dean who finds an opening in the middle. Hit by Dave Hanner. After moving ahead for about five yards to the 26-yard line. Page 26. Following a beautiful return of the kickoff. Packers lead 13 to 10. Van Brocklin down into the center again. Takes the ball, gives to Dean, or Billy Barnes rather, who cuts back up the middle. Gets down inside the 25 and rides pretty close to the 20-yard line. Stopped by Bill Forrester. First down for Philadelphia. First down it is. Billy Barnes carrying to the 20-yard line. So it's the first down and 10 for the Eagles. We're in the fourth quarter. 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Or 45 seconds remaining to be played. Here's Van Brocklin back to pass. He's being rushed and is going to be hit and thrown for a loss. Van Brocklin hit by Ray Nitschke and thrown for a loss of about 8 yards out to the 28-yard line. Let's make it the 27-yard line, a loss of seven. So it'll be second down and 17 for the Eagles on the Green Bay 27-yard line. 
Packers put the rush on Van Bucklin that time. Again, Philadelphia comes out of its huddle. Red slant wide to the left. McDonald to the right. Here's Van Bracklin back to pass. Rolls it short with complete to Barnes. He's at the 25 to the 20. He's hit and it's going to be stopped inside the 15-yard line. Billy Barnes taking a short pass up the middle from Van Bracklin. Found himself wide open and carries down inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. for the Eagles at the 13-yard line of Green Bay. Ben Brockman again calls out the signals. Here is a handoff to Barnes who tries to center the line. He's hit from behind. Gets down very close to the 10-yard line. And it's a first down. First down for the Eagles. The ball just inside the 10-yard line. It was Bill Quinlan who made the tackle that time. These Eagles have 11 first downs. Packers have 18. Philadelphia now has first and goal on the 10-yard line, just inside the 10. First down and goal. Van Brocklin calls the signals, gives to Teddy Dean, who drives off left tackle, down very close to the 5-yard line. Ted Dean carrying the ball for the Eagles. Big pilot there. Bill Forrester and Bill Quinlan made the tackle for Green Bay. The ball is on the five-yard line. Second and goal to go. Ball right on the five-yard line of Green Bay. Boy, these Eagles are fighting back, marching right downfield after a nice return of a last kickoff. Here is Ted Dean with the ball going wide to the left. He cuts inside the five. He's over. Wide to the right, McGee wide to the left. 
Star down on the center, takes the ball, gives to Jimmy Taylor, who drives over right guard for about four yards, up close to the 40-yard line. Stopped there by Don Burroughs and Jess Richardson. Very close to a first down. We're going to have another timeout, an official's timeout for a measurement. Mark comes over to talk with Vince Lombardi. Just inches short, Ronnie Gibbs gives us the signal, just inches short of a first down. So it'll be third and inches for Green Bay. The ball very close to the Packers' 40-yard line. To those Eagles now, they jump in there. To jam up that middle handoff to Jimmy Taylor, who fights for yardage. Boy, he didn't go very far. If he went anywhere at all. Boy, Joe Robb, Jess Richardson, Ed Kyatt, Marion Campbell jammed up the middle. And we might have to have another measurement. They needed just inches, and we are going to have another measurement. Oh, very close to the 40-yard line. Let's see if they made the three or four inches that they needed. Chain gang moves in. They put the chain down. First down. They looked as though Jimmy Taylor was stopped for no game, but they needed only three or four inches. They did make that, so it's a first down for Green Bay. The Packers' 19th first down. First down and 10 for Green Bay on its own 40-yard line. Eagles lead by four points, 17 to 13. Seven and a half minutes to play. Bart Starr brings the Packers out of the huddle. Here is Bart, the back to pass. He looks, he throws one up the middle, completes to McGee. He's hit and down. He, the ball rolls away from him, and it is recovered by Philadelphia. The pass was complete to Max McGee, but he was hit hard and fumbled the ball. It was recovered by Maxi Bond at the Eagle 48-yard line. So Philadelphia has possession. First down and 10 on its own 48-yard line. Van Brocklin brings the Eagles out of the huddle. He's down under the center. Takes the ball, takes a pitch out, gives to Dean, who was hit at the line of scrimmage, but manages to get up across the 50-yard line and to the Green Bay 48. Ted Dean powering his way for about four yards. Second down and six for the Eagles. Bill Quinlan made the tackle for Green Bay. We can just make out that 50-yard line. The ball is at the 49, so give him three yards, and the second down is seven. Again, Van Brocklin brings him out of the huddle. Tommy McDonald split 15 yards to the right. Here's a handoff to Billy Barnes, who drives to the 45. Inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. Barnes getting about six yards. Third down and about one for the Eagles on the Green Bay 43-yard line. The Eagles showing a lot of spirit. Snap out of that huddle. McDonald wide to the right. The ends are in close. Here is a handoff to Ted Dean, who was hit at the line of scrimmage, but rolls away from his man and might have picked up the first down. Let's see. Well, we're going to have to have another measurement. It is very close. He got just about a yard. We'll find out in a moment if he got enough for the first down. It was third and about one. And again, the chain gang moves in. They pull the chain out, and it is short of the first down, still by about a yard. It is fourth down, and about a yard to go for the first down. The ball at the 43-yard line on Green Bay. Fourth down and one. The Eagles lead by four points, 17 to 13. About uh, five minutes and 50 seconds, 45 seconds remaining to be played. Van Brocklin back in front formation, standing on his own 45. Back deep for Green Bay are Willie Wood and Luke Carpenter. Van Brocklin gets the kick away. High wobbly spiral coming down to Wood at the 10-yard line. He tries to get in between a couple of men there, but is hidden down at the 12. The punt by Van Brocklin, taken by Willie Wood, who returns just a couple of yards. So the Packers have the ball first down and 10 on their own 12-yard line. John Nocera was the man who hit Wood and brought him down. First down and 10 for Green Bay. This is Blaine Walsh with Jack Whitaker at the NBC microphones this afternoon here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. 
Green Bay out of the huddle. Star down onto the center. Takes the ball. Drops back to pass. Rolls to the left. He looks. He draws a pass at the sidelines to Tom Moore. He gets away from one man but runs into a couple of others. Chuck Weber and Joe Robb hitting him and stopping him as he crosses the 15-yard line. They move the ball in and spot it down at the 17. A gain of about five yards. A little swing pass from Starr to Tom Moore. Second down and five for Green Bay on its own 17-yard line. Again, Green Bay snaps out of the huddle. McGee at the left side. Canapple is the right hand. Dollar centers a flanker wide to the right. Moore and Taylor are back. Here is Bart Starr giving to Tom Moore, trying the right side. He runs into somebody right on the line of scrimmage. No game. But Merrick hitting him, holding him for no game. Third down and five for Green Bay on its own 17-yard line. About four minutes and ten seconds remaining to be played. This is the big one, the game for the championship, the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles 17, Packers 13. Here is Bart Starr dropping back to pass. That's nice protection. Looks through. Incomplete. Intended for Gary Canapple at the 35-yard line. Pass incomplete. Straight up the middle. So it'll be fourth down and five for Green Bay on its own 17-yard line. The Packers will send Max McGee back into punt formation. Oh, it's been a close game all the way. The Packers led 6 to nothing on a couple of field goals. Then the Eagles went ahead 7-6, to six, then 10-6 to six at the half. Packers went ahead 13-10. to 10. Now the Eagles lead 17-13. to 13. Here's a high pass from center, but McGee gets the kick away. Wobbly spiral. They're going to let it roll. It bounces down to the 35, the 30. Rolling down still at the 26-yard line. Nice punt by Max McGee. So the Eagles have the ball again, first down and 10, on their own 26-yard line. The offensive unit moves back on, Barnes and Dean in the backfield, Tommy McDonald, the flanker back, Ben Brocklin, the quarterback. Reed Redslaff, the left end, Bobby Walston, the right end, Perth and Wittenborn are the guards, Smith, the right tackle, McCusker, the left tackle. The Eagles out of the huddle. Ben Merrick down over the ball, Van Brocklin... Calls out the signals, takes the ball, gives to Dean, going wide to the left, turns that corner, puts his head down, and drives to the 30-yard line. Ted Dean driving for four yards up to the 30-yard line. Second down and six for the Eagles. The scoreboard clock shows three minutes remaining to be played. That is unofficial time, of course. The Eagles now will be trying to run out the clock. It is second down and six. Philadelphia with the ball at its own 30-yard line. Again, Van Brocklin brings the Eagles out of the huddle. He's down under the center. Calls him out, gives to Dean again, who tries left guard. Is hit at the line of scrimmage, but rolls away from the pilot there and gets a couple of extra yards. Up very close to the 35-yard line. And that might be enough for a first down. Johnny Simon closed in from the secondary and stopped him. Now they have to get uh, just outside the 35. And the ball is just short of the 35. Scoreboard clock now shows about two minutes and ten seconds remaining to be played. It is third down, less than a yard to go. And the officials call a timeout now, the two-minute warning. The two-minute warning, Buck Shaw and the Eagles across the way are informed of that fact. There's are the Packers and Vince Lombardi down on the near side of the field. Exactly two minutes to play, and the Eagles lead 17-13. to 13. The Eagles back in their huddle. Third down... And about a yard to go for a first down. This is a big play right here. Packers trying to get possession of that ball. A handoff to Billy Barnes, who tries to center the line. He's hit right on the line of scrimmage. He's fighting for yardage, and the Packers are fighting, trying to hold him back. Big pile up in there. Bill Forrester, Bill Quinlan, Henry Jordan. All making the stop. And let's see where it was stopped. No, he's short of the first down, so it is fourth down. Fourth down, the Eagles did not make it. Fourth down, about a half yard to go for the first down. The ball is right on the 35-yard line. So Van Brocklin drops back into punt formation. 
About a minute 35 to play. Willie Wood and Luke Carpenter back deep for Green Bay. Van Brocklin takes the pass from center, gets the kick away. A high wobbly spiral coming down to Luke Carpenter at the 30-yard line. He's going to be hit and thrown down at the 35. Luke Carpenter hit by Gene Gossage and thrown down at the 35-yard line. Let's pause right here. Ten seconds for station identification. WGY, 810 in your dial, and WGFM, the General Electric Station, connect today. Back at Franklin Field again. About a minute and five seconds remaining to be played. The Packers have possession. First down and ten on their own 35-yard line. Here's Bart Starr back to pass. He looks. He throws one. It's complete to Jimmy Taylor. He shoved out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Five-yard gain on the pass from Starr to Taylor. That stops the clock with 55 seconds remaining to be played. Bednarik was the man who forced Taylor out of bounds. Second down and five for the Packers on their own 40-yard line. They have less than a minute now to get another score. And the field goal, of course, would not be enough. Eagles lead by four points. Packers out of the huddle again. Star down under the center. Takes the ball. Drops back to pass. He looks. He throws one. Complete to Tom Moore. He's at the 40. He's hit and going to be down at the 45-yard line. Just about enough for a first down. And a timeout has been called by Green Bay to stop the clock. With just about 45 seconds remaining to be played. Maxie Bond and Tom Brookshire made the stop that time. They're short of the first down by about a yard. When play is resumed, it'll be third down and one for the Packers. The ball is at the 44-yard line. Timeout down on the playing field. Well, this has been quite a ball game we've been watching here this afternoon. As we pointed out earlier, the Packers took an early lead on a couple of field goals by Paul Horning. The Eagles scored a touchdown and a point to go ahead 7-6. to six. Then the Eagles added a field goal to lead 10-6. to six. That was the halftime score. Green Bay scored next, taking a 13-10 to 10 lead. And then Philadelphia came right back with one to take the lead 17-13. So the Packers have called a timeout to stop the clock. 45 seconds remaining to be played. Bart Starr came over and talked with Vince Lombardi during the timeout. Now he moves back onto the field and we're all set to go again. Third down, about one for Green Bay. They have the ball on their own 44-yard line. Green Bay comes out of the huddle. Dowler wide to the right. McGee split out to the left. Here is Starr giving to Jimmy Taylor. Coming around the left side, charging hard. Runs into somebody and is driven out of bounds of the 50-yard line. Boy, he put his head down and charged very hard into Tom Brookshire and went out of bounds at the 47-yard line of Philadelphia. 40 seconds remaining to be played. Packers have the ball now in Philadelphia territory. First down and 10 on the Eagles, 47-yard line. Nine-yard gain on the play. Here's Bart Starr down under the center again. He takes the ball and drops back to pass. He looks. He throws one. It's complete to Knapple. Down at the Eagle 30-yard line. Tries to get away, but he's hidden down at the 30-yard line. 30 seconds remaining to be played. And again, the Packers call a timeout to stop the clock. They have a first down and 10 on the Eagle 30-yard line. Jimmy Carr made the tackle for the Eagles. And again, Bart Starr comes over to talk with Vince Lombardi during this timeout. The Packers moving that ball downfield. First down and 10 at the Eagle 30-yard line. They're getting ever deeper into Eagle territory, but as I pointed out a moment ago, a field goal will do the Packers no good at this point. They trail by four. 17 to 13 is the score. The Eagles lead the Packers. Jack, this has been quite a battle here this afternoon. Well, we said this second half play was going to be something, and I think it's one of the finest played professional football games in the second half I've ever had the pleasure of witnessing. Great crunching blocks and hard tackles and great offensive and defensive play by both clubs, and it's a real cliffhanger, as most of them are. With 30 seconds to go, Green Bay roaring now is down on the 30-yard line of Philadelphia with 30 seconds left and a first down. So hang on to your seats, everybody. This championship game is going down to the last final second. All right, Blaine. Bart Starr has completed 19 out of 32 passes. First down and 10 
on the Eagle 30-yard line. Star down under the center now. Calls out the signal. Takes the ball and drops back the pass. Gets protection. Looks. Throws a long one intended for Dowler. It is incomplete. Down in the end zone. Dowler and Don Burroughs now square off down in the end zone. But the official jumps in between them. Pass intended for Boyd Dowler is incomplete. Jimmy Carr and Don Burroughs both were back there with Dowler. Clock stops automatically. It shows 25 seconds remaining to be played. Second down and 10 for Green Bay. They have the ball on the Eagle, 30-yard line. 25 seconds left. Packers move back into their huddle. Tom Brookshire, Bobby Freeman, John Burroughs, and Jimmy Carr, the deep men, in that Eagle defensive backfield. Packers out of the huddle again. Second down, 10. Again, Starr takes the ball and drops back to pass. He looks, he throws. The pass is complete to Knapple at the 22-yard line. He is hidden down immediately by Maxie Bond. And the clock is... Packers now trying, lining up, trying to get another play underway. Clock continues to run. But 10 seconds. Packers have time, maybe, for one more play. Starr takes the ball and drops back to pass. He looks. He throws one. It's complete. Down at the 15, to the 10. Who makes the hands? Makes the ham. That are the highest of hams. Why, high grade. Why, high grade. High grade makes the hammiest and tastiest of all smoked hams. The one and only high grade's West Virginia brand deluxe ham. No skin, no excess fat, no shank bone, no H bone. You buy only the eat of the ham. So easy to carve, and every slice is center size. High Grade's original deluxe West Virginia brand ham. Delicious, tender, fully cooked. High Grade also makes the most delicious canned ham. Completely boneless, ready to serve. H-Y-G-R-A-D-E. I trust to be a... By High Grade's hot dog. High Grade's its best. And say, here's a fast-growing, high-grade favorite for you to try. High-grade smoked sliced beef. High-grade smoked sliced beef. Well, we had quite an afternoon here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. Tremendously exciting football game. And, of course, we have to congratulate Buck Shaw and the Philadelphia Eagles for a fine season and a fine game. The winners of the National Football League's playoff game, the new world champions. Now for a recap of the game and other comments, here again is Jack Whitaker. Thank you very much, Blaine Walsh at the Green Bay Packers. In a tremendously played ball game this afternoon, the Eagles win it 17-13 to on a clear, beautiful day with a slightly frozen field. After the Eagles won the toss, their first play after the kickoff was a pass interception by Quinlan of Green Bay, but the Eagles held and took over the ball at their own five. But then Ted Dean, in going for a first down fumble that was recovered, and from there, Paul Horning kicked the field goal from the 20-yard line, and the Packers jumped out to a 3 nothing lead. Then the Eagles were forced to punt on the next series of downs, and so it went back and forth until Horning again kicked the field goal, this time from the 24-yard line, and the Packers led 6 nothing in the first period. Then, as the first period came to an end, the Eagles got back into action. They took over first and ten on their own 44, following a kick by Max McGee. On the first play, McDonald caught a Van Brocklin pass at the Green Bay 35, and on the second play, McDonald went all the way from it to, for a touchdown. Two plays covering 56 yards, and the Eagles led 7-6. to six. That's how it went until the Eagles forced Green Bay to punt on the next series of downs, and the Eagles then moved eight plays, going all the way for a field goal by Bobby Walston from the 15-yard line after their attack stalled down, and they led 10-6. to six. That's the way it was at halftime, and as we mentioned, 
The first half looked like two fighters feeling each other out. And the two great coaching staffs of these two fine ball clubs went to work at halftime, and we saw some dazzling football work in the second half. Hard blocks, great defensive play, and crunching tackles, both teams hitting very hard, and we might say in passing very cleanly. Very few penalties in this game, and the second half became a real cliffhanger. Green Bay took the opening kickoff, stalled down on their 46-yard line, and kicked to the Eagles, who then had a kick on fourth down. And so it went until the Eagles had a fine march on their way. The ninth play of the series, second down and goal to go on the four-yard line. Simank intercepted a pass in the end zone, and it looked for a moment as if that might have been the turning point of the game. It looked even more so on the next series of downs as the Packers took over on their 20. On fourth down and 10 for their 20, Max McGee, dropping back in punt formation, saw nothing but the backs of 11 Eagles and ran the ball from deep punt formation out to the 50 to retain possession for the Packers, who then went all the way down at the end of the third period, continued in the beginning of the fourth period, and finally the drive paid off with a pass from Bart Starr to Max McGee for a touchdown. 12 plays, 80 yards, with 13 minutes and 10 seconds left. The Packers had taken a 13 to 10 lead over Philadelphia. But on the next kickoff, Ted Dean took the kickoff and bowled it upfield to the Green Bay 40-yard line. A penalty put the ball at the Green Bay 31, and Van Brocklin went to work. Seven plays later, Ted Dean ran the ball with a great block by Jerry Hoof into the end zone from the five-yard line. Seven plays, 40 yards, with nine minutes left. The Eagles took the lead at 17-13. Then on the next series of plays, Max McGee fumbled. It was recovered by Bond, and the Eagles used up precious time before Van Brocklin kicked to the Green Bay 12. Then the Eagles held and took over possession with three minutes and 30 seconds to go. But they couldn't get the first down, and the Packers took over. With one minute and 30 seconds left on their own 35-yard line, 67,000 people here were on the edge of their seats. Bart Starr moved this ball club from their own 35 down to the Eagles' 10-yard line. And there, with time running out, he pitched a pass to Taylor, who was finally dumped at the 10-yard line as the game went over. But if it had another 20 seconds left, there's nobody doubts that it might have been a different score. Well, that's it. 17-13 is the Philadelphia Eagles in a beautiful game against another great team, the Green Bay Packers. These two teams well representing both conferences here in the National Football League. The cream of the crop playing a great game at Franklin Field for the championship of 1960. Blaine, have you anything you'd like to add? Well, the fans here, uh, Jack, are trying to get out on the field and tear the goalpost down. The uh, large police force here at Franklin Field has been doing a good job of restraining them. But a uh, few fans have broken onto the field now. They're giving them a little battle. They're trying to get out through the goalpost. And uh, that is the reason for the noise and the excitement in the background. But you're right as far as the football game is concerned. It was tremendously exciting and uh, a real hard fought, a well-played game all the way. All right, once again, the final score, Philadelphia 17, Green Bay 13. Well, that about wraps it up. And Blaine Walsh, it's been a pleasure working with you here today in this championship game. And I know all the fans back at Green Bay are a little disappointed, but they have nothing to be ashamed of. This was a great football team today. Well, they had a fine season, Jack, and they presented themselves very well here this afternoon against a very good Philadelphia Eagle ball club. So as I mentioned a moment ago, we congratulate the Eagles on their fine victory here this afternoon. Jack, it's been a pleasure working with you and this entire NBC crew, and I'll be looking forward to seeing all of you again in 1961. Right, Blaine, thank you very much. Your host for the first half of today's broadcast has been the Savings and Loan Foundation, representing the nation's 4,000 insured savings and loan associations, where savings work hard or an extra income and are insured by an agency of the U.S. government. There is an insured savings and loan association conveniently located near you. And remember, where you save does make a difference. Also sponsoring today's championship game has been your quality Buick dealer, who invites you to be his guest and drive the Buick special. The go, the ride, the room of the Buick, yet with the savings of the compacts. And the luxurious full-size Buick with award-winning queen look of action, as fine, as new as you can go. And the fourth and final period of today's World Championship game between Green Bay and Philadelphia was presented by the High Grade Food Products Corporation, serving all America with the tastiest of meats. For the finest quality made by High Grades. Our producer today has been Len Dillon, our engineer, Harry Alexander. This is the NBC Radio Network. This is John Miley speaking. We hope that you have enjoyed this game. If you want to know more about other items that exist in the Miley Collection, 
Call 1-812-479-9143. We will look forward to talking with you and hope that you are pleased with our presentations.